Bowl. Now, the question now is, can they sustain that and continue their winning ways in the bicentennial year? Well, to help us answer that question and many more is our color analyst, former Gamecock linebacker and nine-year NFL veteran, Corey Miller. And Corey, how about this? There's a lot more pressure on this football team now, now that they've proven they can win. Well, Todd, it really is. You know, t teams are aware of the Gamecocks right now. Last year, they snuck up on people, won some games, but now people know about this football team, and they got some great players, a lot of returning starters. And this team can turn around, Todd. They had the hugest turnaround in SEC history. You can look here, 8.2 points per game, going to 23.6 on offense. And then defense, they're in the top 10, giving up 15.1 points a game. This is a great football team, Todd. They just got to keep their composure about them and go out and play. Well, one of the key components to that great defensive turnaround for Charlie Strong was All-American linebacker Kalimba Edwards. And he's the real deal. I and mean, he's got all the tools, Corey. He really does. This guy slated right now to be the number five pick in the draft. We know that can change. He's a 2001 preseason All-American and All-SEC candidate. This guy can play up or down. He can rush the passer. He can cover the, you know, receivers downfield. He can do it all. He is for real. 11 sacks on the year last year, and the most explosive player in the SEC, in my opinion, Derek Watson. He's often been troubled off the field, but when he's on there, he is explosive. And he's had a little hamstring injury, but, Corey, we can expect a lot of big things out of him this year. Well, no doubt. Derek's a great football player, as you can see here. He's, he's he got all the tools. He can catch the ball. He can run with the football top. But I think his greatest asset is his quickness. He can make people miss. You know, the thing is, can he stay healthy for one and two? Can he stay out of trouble? And if he does that, this guy got a shot to go to the next level. Well, often when you're playing your first ball game against an opponent, maybe from the whack, it's more important to focus on your team and what they do. But not in this case. Boise State is talented. They've scored 44 points per game over the last couple of years on average, 18 straight games where they scored 30 points or more. And Ryan Didwitty, their quarterback, will have to take over for a program that's been throwing the football very well. Well, make no mistake about it. It's a great football team. They're coming back with a lot of offensive starters. Didwitty stepping in for an all-Big West, two-time all-Big West quarterback who's gone now. Can this sophomore take over and do well? Well, Ty, he's got a great challenge ahead of him tonight facing a great Gamecock defense. Well, they're expecting more than 84,000 on hand for the Gamecocks tonight here at williams Bryce Stadium. We'll see it. Our number 21 Gamecocks taking on the Boise State Broncos. The 2001 entrance to open the 2001 season for Lou Holtz and the Fighting Gamecocks. Man, I tell you, Todd, you can feel the energy in this stadium. I mean, you know the feeling. 2001, opening game, great atmosphere, great energy, 84,000 plus. You got to love it. Well, it was voted the best entrance in college football again this year by the Sporting News and anybody who's ever been in williams Price. When they start playing that song, knows there's a difference. I actually started playing that in 1983. Of course, it's 2001 Space Odyssey. But what an appropriate entrance song this year as it being the 201st year of the University of South Carolina. It's the bicentennial season. It's the 108th season of football at the university. Well, I'll tell you, you got to love the energy. You got to love the fans, the Gamecock fans, some of the greatest in the country. And I tell you, these guys got to be pumped when you got these type of fans here supporting you. I tell you, it's a great feeling. And of course, they are led by Lou Holtz, the third winningest active coach in college football right now. You see his record, 224 wins. He's been in it actually 30 years now, starting tonight. Led four different teams to top 20 finishes, the only one in college football history to ever do that. And we all know six times he has taken teams to a bowl game in its second season. Incredible. Well, you, you can't say enough about Lou Holtz. I mean, the job he's done for the Gamecocks, coming in here 0-11, not winning a football game, Todd. Next year going, winning the Outback Bowl, 8-4 season. This guy's a great coach. He demands great respect from his players. You can't say enough about him. The people here in South Carolina love Lou Holtz. And uh, I tell you, it's going to be exciting to see what he does this year. And Dan Hawkins, a little bit different situation for this young man. Very successful. You see the 40-11-5 record, but it's his first year at Boise State as the head coach. He's been an assistant there for three years, coaching the tight ends and uh, also as well working as recruiting coordinator. But his 
very successful record came at Willamette University in Oregon, where he actually played for the 1997 National Championship out of that conference. Well, it's a very competent staff, and this has really been like the Miami Ohio of of the 90s and the 2000s. It's where all good coaches go, and then they move on to other bigger programs. Well, Dan Hawk is the guy coming in his first year, Todd. He came from a great program. Right now, Boise State is ranked 12th nationally in wins. I could tell you a lot about this program. He's inheriting a very good football team. But it's going to be interesting how he, his first game against a great coach like Lou Holtz. Well, you see the crowd. Another sellout. They sold 56,000 season tickets this year to the University of South Carolina. And let's check out our deep guys. David McHale and Brock Forsey. Of course, the outstanding tandem that you'll see throughout the evening. And that's Joey Bowers, the play speaker for Carolina. And we kick it off. There we go. And that'll be Michael taking it about the seven yard line. He crosses the 20, found a little bit of a lane, and then there's the Gamecocks wrap him up at the 25 yard line. It's Brian Brownlee and Jermaine Lemon on the tackle for the Gamecocks. So here Charlie Strong will break him out. This is a defense that was number one in scoring defense last year in the SEC. And it'd be good to see Kenny Harney back in at the linebacker position. And we take a look at Boise State coming off the sidelines. And how does Ryan Dinwiddie feel right now? This young man, outstanding player in high school, has seen limited action, as we mentioned last year, behind the outstanding player, Bart Hendricks. But uh, he is a winner and hopefully used to play in this environment. First and 10 now on the 27-yard line, and there's been really going to work, but we'll have some kind of movement or something that will stop the play for a momentarily. Well, that's just anxiety. Then Woody again, a sophomore, coming here in a large crowd, 84,000. Let's get the call. And that's a delay of game. You don't like to see that when you bring him off the sideline, Corey. Well, I don't so much blame Ben Woody. You got to blame the coaches, Todd. I mean, it took so long on the sideline where he didn't get a chance to get the play in and run it. He's a six foot, 192 pound sophomore. This guy is 27 and one since he started playing high school football. They're offset back here this time. The Gamecocks in a three man front, then ready to drop back. He goes right across the middle to Force, and the ball is incomplete. Let's look at the lineups. Offense, of course, is led by Dinwiddie, Cheek, and Huff. Probably the most experienced along that offensive line, but Matt Hill is the guy they say is a converted defensive end, is extremely talented. Brock Forse, six in the country in all-purpose yards a year ago. Top six receivers back for the Broncos as well. Three-man front again, Faison up on the line of scrimmage, and Dinwiddie's going to try to hand it off, and... A little cutback that time for Forze. Brock Forze is a junior, only 5'11", Corey, 198 pounds. But he is uh, very, very good at finding those little holes. Let's check the Gamecock defense now. There's Stamper. Played a little baseball before they talked to him about getting back in the weight room. And Langston Moore, by far the best player on the defensive line. We already mentioned Edwards and Kenny Harney. Leading tackle coming back from a year ago. Rob Thomas is somebody to keep an eye on because he's filling the position with Shannon Wadley and an exceptional secondary for Carolina. Third down now and three. Uh, uh, third down and 13 after the penalty. Ryan Dinwiddie drops back. Got some time and Langston Moore's going to It's going to force him to run. And look at Kalimba Edwards run, Corey. Well, look, Kalimba, this is why this guy is rated one of the top five players in the country, Todd. He's a great pass. Well, as you can see him early, he's been standing up as a linebacker. Now he gets down in the 4-3, rushed the passes. But look at his perseverance. This guy will run you down. He's fast. He runs a 4 5 40 at 265 pounds. You can see here, he, he chases the quarterback. Now look at him. Runs downfield. That's just heart right there. You never stop. You never get up on the play. And that's why Kalimba Edwards is one of the best linebackers in the country. Ryan Brewer now back for the Gamecocks to receive the punt. A little bit of pressure, but they drop back. Brewer on the run, takes it, moves up the field. Sixth in the SEC a year ago. And we probably wouldn't have a whole telecast to talk about Ryan Brewer and what he has done for the Gamecock football team. Of course, Mr. Ohio football. 
as that was a punt of 37 yards, net of 10 yards after Ryan Brewer's return, and that'll start the Gamecocks at the 39-yard line. There's Phil Petty from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. He's going to start it off for the Gamecocks, 6'3", 205-pound senior. Completed 54% of his passes a year ago, and many people think, Corey, he might have been the MVP on this football team. Well, he didn't have great numbers, Todd, but what this guy does, he does not lose football games for you. He's a steady, consistent performer, doesn't make a lot of turnovers, don't throw a lot of interceptions, he protects the football, and that's really all you can ask out of a quarterback. Phil was so good on third downs of hitting those guys on the slants. It took so many of our drives, Corey, as you remember, 10, 12 play drives for scoring drives during the year. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that uh, Phil Petty was able to hit those short routes with not a lot of exceptional skill players in the receiver position and just pick up first downs. Well, that's all you can do. I think this is the best formation for the Gamecocks. Every time they go into the spread formation, they move the ball, they control the clock. As you mentioned, those short slant routes, Phil Petty has been very consistent throwing the football. Here's the offense for the Gamecocks. Travell Wharton, a left tackle, been the anchor there. Kevin Rivers, what a story. At the left guard position, and the running backs, Pennick, will start. We know we'll see Derek Watson soon. Shotgun right away for Phil Petty, and trips to the left side with Pennick in the backfield. Four-man front, and they'll take it. And Pennick breaks through across the 50-yard line. First down, Carolina. Andrew Pennick, a little play that they run so often, but is still so effective. Wes Nurse on the tackle for Boise State. Well, you can see here, it's just the blocking up front. The guys up front, Mano Imano, doing a great job of moving those guys out the hole. Pennick, very explosive, gets about 10, 12 yards. A great running back. 15 yards on the pickup now. Boise State showing some pressure up front. Bill Petty going to let everybody know what he wants out of the backfield. First down. They stay back, and they go back to Pinnock again on the same play. And that takes Boise State coming up from their secondary positions to make the stop about a four-yard gain on the play. Here's our defense. Bobby Hammer experience. Al Terry is really the only guy that started last year on the defensive front. And Quentin Michael. What an outstanding player at the outside linebacker position for them. Co-defensive player last year in the Big West Conference. Second down now for Phil Petty. Second and five on the 42. Two tight ends this time. And they go back to the workhorse, Andrew Pinnock. Well, that play right there got stopped cold, and that was a great job by Boise State def defensive line. You can see the push there in the backfield. Anytime those linemen get in the backfield, tie, running back really don't have a chance to make any moves right there. Great job by the whole front four of Boise State. LeGarry Mitchell on the stop for Boise State, 6'1", 244-pound sophomore. They went from a nickel package they played most of the time last year that they're in actually now to a 4-3. So Bill Petty will try to put it in the air likely on third and five. And he goes right to the hitch pattern, and it's a completion to Carlos Spikes. First down, Carolina. You see that we talked about his, his ability to throw those short passing routes, Todd. And you can see there, going into the spread formation, Carlos Spikes running a great route just all the time in route. Travis Berger on the stop for Boise State. Seven-yard pickup. You can see here at the replay, Phil Petty sits in there. Great protection up front. Throws the ball in there. Very nice, tight spiral to Carlos Spikes. Carlos from Tallahassee, Florida. Plagued by some injuries, but continues to make a big impact. Three receivers left again, and Phil Petty will go back to the quick passing game. Can't find anybody. Now he's flushed out. Now he's really chased and gets rid of the football. And, Corey, that scares you because Phil Petty, the one thing down about his his game over the last couple of years has been injuries and when he gets out of the pocket like that that's what you worry about you do worry about him you can see a couple of circumstances last year phil petty ran the football tie got hit came up gimping and you always worried about a quarterback tie you play quarterback you know you don't like to get out that pocket because people are, are coming to the football and you have a great opportunity to get hurt bobby hammer on the stop he had 21 stops last year only three returning players at least starters for boise state on defense Lots of room for those receivers to the outside, but they go back to the draw play and Andrew Pinnock. Pinnock, I tell you what, with Derek Watson, Bill Petty, some of these players like Clint Edwards, and here comes Derek Watson in the game right now. But let's not forget Andrew Pinnock. Andrew has just ran for 2,800 yards 
when he was in high school. He's played the tailback position, plays fullback, and he's been a consistent workhorse for the Gamecocks. He's a great running back. He reminds me of the mold of a Jerome Bettis type back, big, strong. He's physical. He delivered blows when he run the football. And it's a great changeup for us. We got Derek Watson, then you hit him with Pinnock. Again, we call them thunder and lightning, and that's what they kind of run the football as. Third down now for Phil Petty. He was under pressure, and a flag goes down. There's Michael on the interference of Carlos Spikes. Plays that A receiver position. Michael, we mentioned, no defensive player of the year. We'll have a chance here now to see the pressure that Phil Petty gets as they run a twist up front. Well, that's a little bit of a zone dog right there. You can see the defender came in. A little, just a little bit too early right there. Got his hands on Michael Ages. Referee's right there looking at the play and called the penalty. Bill Petty now is going to bring him up off to the penalty. Of course, the interference. It will be first down there on the 27-yard line. They'll bring Ryan Brewer in motion. They fake it to him and give it to Derek Watson. Look at 22 go. Oh, it's nice to see him get going. Well, you got to feel good for Derek Watson. This guy has had all kind of things happen to him in the offseason. You know, he's kind of got a target on his chest, but he's a he's a great player. You can see here, he fake the dive right here to Ryan Brewer. All this is a draw play. And look at Watson. He's had, he has great vision. He can see the holes. The shoestring tackle there. You can't see who made that tackle, but it's a great saving tackle. That would have been a touchdown. 13 yards on the pickup for Derek Watson. It's another Carolina first down just outside the 10 yard line. Tight end this time, they go Ryan Brewer. Great block by Andrew Pettit. He gets to the outside and look at Brewer go. Flags come down late. And I'm not so sure that Michael Ages wasn't there on a clip. As he comes running to the sideline. It was a late flag though, Corey, because the block that I think they're referring there to on Michael as we get a good look at him. Well, anytime they throw a flag that late, it's usually in that area of the field tied holding or, or blocking below the waist. Let's get the call right here from the official. Well, that just kills the drive when you're moving the football very nicely down the field. And you get a holding pill, and that, that really hurts. You can see here. Yeah, that was. As a matter of fact, it was Michael Ages, the junior. 5'11", 175 from Rex, Georgia. He's had nagging injuries, and he might get another one if he gets too close to Lou Holtz on the sideline after that. <laughs> so that's going to bring him back now outside the 15-yard line. Phil Petty going to set the screen up, give it to Derek Watson. Two great blocks. Touchdown, Carolina. Here we go. You can hear the crowd going loud and crazy. A 16-yard setup for Derek Watson on a beautifully executed play with which Shane Hall came out there and knocked the corner down for Boise State. And you said it, Todd. That play was very well executed. Boise State was, was playing the pass. The defenders were back too deep and got the ball to Watson. Great blocking out in front of him. Great play. Great, great play calling by Skip Holtz for the touchdown. The extra point is good. Dan Weaver gets the duties. So Carolina's up here, seven nothing with 9:58 to go from Williams Bryce Stadium. That was a 10-play, 61-yard drive by Carolina to open up their offensive weaponry here early on. So it's seven nothing after the Dan Weaver. Extra point. Joey Bowers will go back to kick off for the Gamecocks. We have our same return men for Boise State. Brock Forsay and David Michael. That was a great drive top out of Gamecocks. Ten plays, as you mentioned, 61 yards. Great play calling by Skip Holtz. A mixture of a lot of draw plays out the spread formation. Again, get Boise State on their heels. Then you hit them with the screen. Great blocking up front by the offensive line. Derek Watson is the recipient of that touchdown. I think you've mentioned it before, Corey, but that combination of seeing Andrew Pinnock go in and seeing Derek Watson come in after that is is just got to be devastating on the defense. Well, I mean, they have a triple threat. You think about it, you got a Mr. South Carolina, you got Mr. Connecticut football, you got Mr. Ohio football, and all these guys are, have different strengths, and, 
you know, I think Skip Holtz does a great job of utilizing each one of them straight. He really does good in rotating those guys in and out. Here's Bowers now ready to kick off. And it's a low drive angling towards the sidelines. Going to work out well for Carolina as they pin Michael inside the 10, but he's got a lane to the outside, and it's going to take our kicker Bowers to come over about the 34-yard line for Carolina to put a stop to him. And I tell you what, they want you to kick it between the hash mark and the 10, but you better get it down inside there deep. Well, you can see here we're going to go back to the touchdown play. Now, look at the blocking up front. It's set up very nicely. The linemen think they're going to have a sack right there. Look at the great block right there. Derek Watson, wide open touchdown. Nobody there to touch. You can see the second look right here. Sets it up very nicely by Phil. Buys time. Gets the ball to Derek Watson. Great blocking downfield. Touchdown, Gamecocks. Much better field position now for Boise State. As then when he goes back to the air and uses one of his favorite targets, Jed Putzer. 6'5", 234-pound senior from Eagle, Idaho. It's a guy converted from the wide receiver position to tight end in this past year. Caught 35 passes for 352 yards and three TDs a year ago. So Dinwiddie now, Corey, off to a little bit better start. Well, he just had to come down and keep his composure. He was a little rusty in the beginning, but now you got to settle down and play football. There's Michael on the end around from the motion and played well that time by Carolina. And the first time we call his name out, but I can assure you it won't be the last. Rashad Faison on the stop for the Gamecocks. Faison is a very active football player. Pound for pound, he's the, probably the best defensive player on this football team. He, he plays a safety position, a rover position up on the line of scrimmage. He's a little guy, but he's tough. He stays in there trying, he makes plays. Had a so shoulder surgery in the offseason. 99 total tackles in 2000, the second on the team. Five sacks for the little guy. All right, here we go, third and three. And they go trips to the left side. They flood the gates a lot out there, and they're going to do it. Dinwit sprints out to the left. Oh, what a great catch. He stays on his feet. That's just great determination right there by the Boise State receiver. Jay Swilly. Jay Swilly with the outstanding grab and then takes a bump from the Carolina defender in order to get the first down. Well, that was that was Faison right there. He came up very nicely. You know, this is the thing you don't do when you tackle. Faison tried to show the tackling right there. Does not wrap the guy up. The guy's able to get the first time, first down. That was just poor tackling right there by Rashad Faison. So first down for the Broncos, and this time they're going to go back to the draw right out of the Gamecock playbook but a good stop that time for Carolina and that's Kenny Hart inside linebacker good to have Kenny back after he broke his figure last year in this five games it really is Kenny Hart is a very active linebacker good football player and he's got to step his game now let's take a look right here but probably the guy who makes this play in my opinion is Langston Moore look at him take two guys right there to block him freeze Kenny Horney up comes up make a great tackle and that's the thing Todd your defensive lineman has to play good football in order for your linebacker to really be effective Good point. That was a three-yard game for the Broncos, so they go second and seven now. And the motion and the movement that we've heard about from this club starts to show. Dinwiddie with a big rocket, but Andre Goodman on the great coverage there of the Broncos receiver, Andre Goodman. What a story there. Goodman's a great football player. You know, he's a twinner type. He's a corner, but he can roll, uh, float back in there and play some safety. Very good coverage right there. He broke down, made a play on the football. Of course, in 1998, he had that just unbelievably bad knee injury against Georgia. We had it for more than a year. He came back now, and they say for the scouts, he ran a 4-3-2. All right, third and seven for the Gamecocks. They line up four down men. Back the corners off of Dinwiddie under center again. He drops back. Sophomore under pressure into Lake Samore. He's going to run, and there's Edwards again, but it won't get Dinwiddie this time as he picks up the first down. So some nifty footwork that time by the sophomore who did not allow our All-American to run him down. 15 yards on the game. Well, that's just heads-up play there by Dinwiddie. He felt the pressure. The pocket collapsed on him. He stepped up, didn't see anybody downfield. Heads-up play. Didn't force the ball down the field. He pulled it down and ran with it. Columbia was there, missed the tackle right there. Dinwiddie gets the first down. Dinwiddie's been playing all his life and played in... 8 of 11 games last year, 11 of 19 for 137 yards. Here's the shifting. And now the motion. High backfield. Offset. They're going to run sprint draw. And Langston Moore, just as you called him out, 
the time before, Corey, he occupied somebody. That time he split them. He split them that time. Great use of the hands right there. Took on the block, shared the block, and got off and made the tackle. And that's what you want out of your defensive lineman. And in my estimation, my opinion, Langston Moore was probably the better defensive lineman, even over Cleveland Ping and Cecil Caldwell. So great play there by Langston Moore. Bring up a second and a little more than a seven now. Yards to go for the first down. They have obviously crossed into Gamecock territory. It looks like Charlie Strong's going to crank it up. Here comes pressure, and they back off a little bit. Dinwiddie, though, still under pressure by Kenny Harney. He gets the ball away. So a nice job by the sophomore, who's showing some really, really good instincts that time to get the ball off to his receiver. The thing I like about it is he stays in the pocket, Ty. He, he's not really anxious. He don't run out there right away. He let the pressure come. Missed sack there by Kenny Horn. He steps up for a piece of pass. Tough guy for a sophomore. Not really have that much playing time underneath his belt, Ty. But he's playing pretty consistent right now. Well, he's got him in striking range. As you hear that Carolina crowd come up for this game back defense. Two receivers are the right this time. And Pressure again. They bring two backers. Pump fake, and he's going for it all. Sheldon Brown on the coverage. Never got his back around, but it still was effective. Incomplete pass. That time, Lou Fanuki, the outstanding receiver, returned last year for Boise State at 5'11", 191-pound junior. Caught 40 balls last year, but he didn't get that one. He didn't get that one because he's going up against an all-SEC performance, Sheldon Brown who's ranked as one of the top cornerbacks in the league. Try to run a hitch and go, but Sheldon recovered greatly on that play, knocked the pass down. Nick Gallagher, who's going to attempt the field goal now, and it's fumbled. He's going to have to run. It was a bad snap, and Willie really offered his own chase for Carolina, and it will be down. So no scoring opportunity, not even a shot to take it from the outstanding kicker. who's a Lou Groza candidate. Didn't even have a chance to get that one off. Well, that's all on the holder right there and the snapper. The one thing you got to do when you're kicking the field goal is it starts with the snapper, then to the holder. As you can see here, the snap was kind of low. The holder was not able to get the ball down and the pressure by the Gamecocks there. Stopped the play, and you just can't have that. You moved the ball nicely down the field, had a chance to get three points by all Big West kicker, and, you know, you come up short because of a bad snap. Calica, you don't want to hurt your leading scorer. <laughs> He's got to run the football there. Now Phil Petty will bring him back out. Start it just beyond the 35-yard line. They go wide receiver screen to the short side of the field. Look at Brian Scott. Find himself a lane. So Great the play. screen games, Corey, have been big so far for Carolina. Screen is always big. Anytime you go in the spread formation, these guys are backed off. 21 yards on the pickup for Brian Scott. You can see here. You, hear, you get the fake rollout right here. You go back to the wide receiver screen. The corners are dropped off right there, enables Brian Scott to get down the field for a great game right there. Great play calling again by Skip Holtz. You've done something right when your defensive lineman, Tony Altieri, has to make the stop for the Broncos. That many plays down the field. Go back to work again. Four receivers and Corey Alexander coming around. And they'll give it to him on the reverse this time. He's got some blockers. Maybe the little man make the leap for the first down. Doesn't quite get it. But again, a nine-yard pickup that time, and we're seeing Skip Holtz not hold anything back from the standpoint of versatility in their package. Well, again, spread formation allows you to do so many things. You can fake the dive. You can do in and around, which that that play was called where there was just an in and around. You catch the defense off guard. I mean, they got to prepare so much for the spread offense that Skip Holtz is just playing a chess game for them right now. Of course, Alexander, one of the fastest Gamecocks on the team. If you're going to get anybody on the corner, he's a good one to do it. Second down and very, very short. You'd like to see Phil Petty go up top. And he might do it just here. He does do that, going for the end zone. He's got Scott down there, beat. Touch Oh, he drops the football. Oh, no. my goodness. That was a great pass there by Phil Petty. Travis Berger on the defense, but it wasn't much of that. He was flailing his arms at best. And Brian Scott on the pump fake. They thought the crossing route was coming, and he went up the sidelines. Look at Lou Holtz. He knows he wants that one back. Well, that's a touchdown right there. Great play calling. You caught it early. Go over top right here. You see the pump fake by Petty. Gets the defense back to set down right there. Great throw. Uh, Brian, hold on. He just don't hold on to the football. Incomplete pass. Oh, you got to catch that one. You got to catch. That's all on Brian Scott right there. I know he wish he could have that one back. But guess what? You got to line up and play the next play. Well, we don't just have a incompletion. 
They actually have a penalty on the play, and it goes in the Gamecocks' favor. Well, that helps, but still, if you catch the ball, you got a touchdown. I mean, Brian Scott had 35 receptions last year, Todd. He's a big target. You know, not real fast, not real, you know, shifty, but he's got a big body. He can shield off defenders, and he should have came up with that football right there. Gamecocks will get another chance. We'll get many of those, though. This time it'll be right on the 20-yard line in first and 10. Rod Wilson into the game. He'll go short side at one of the receivers, and Derek Watson in the backfield. Bill Petty will hand it to him on the counter, and he finds a little lane, finds a little more lane, and tries to spin out of it. But as usual, Derek can make a five-yard gain look outstanding. The thing about him is his versatility. You can see there, he's not a very big guy, but he has strong lower body legs. You can see here, just a draw play. Now watch, watch the footwork. You can see that it makes people miss. Now watch him. He keeps his legs moving and driving all the time, which allows him to get positive yardage. But sometimes, Todd, he gets a chance to do those things. He tries to do a little too much and sometimes fumble the ball. Well, the Gamecocks are inside the 20-yard line again, threatening, and they lead in this ball game 7-0 with 3.34 to go in the first quarter. You see the score, and you see the ominous skies. We had some rain earlier here today at williams Bryce Stadium, but a beautiful night for football. More than 84,000 are watching their Gamecocks inside the 15-yard line now as Bill Petty checks the play. Three receivers to the right. They go receiver screen again. That's Corey Alexander, and he can run. Two good blocks that time. James Atkinson and Rod Wilson for Carolina. Again, you see the wide receiver screen there. I'll tell you, Skip Holt's got a great package. This guy has a sharp pencil. I mean, he's setting up plays out of all kinds of formations. You can see there the two receivers right there just shielding, setting up blocks for, for Corey to run with the football right there. He's just great game. But I tell you, Skip has a very, very sharp pencil when it comes to play calling. And a low risk one on that one. Nine yards on the pickup, and it brings us first and goal. And look at this jumbo set. Andrew Pinnock, Ryan Brewer in the backfield, two tight ends, and just Brian Scott out to your left side. Five-man front by Boise State. They give it to Pinnock, and no, they will not stop him. Touchdown, Carolina. Andrew Pinnock, that's all he does is score touchdowns. Hey, you give it to your horse, and that's Andrew Pinnock. He's the thunder of the group. And when you get down inside the red zone or inside the five-yard line, you can look for him to get, get the football. But you got to give the, the uh, heads up too tight to the offensive line. They're doing a very good job. A lot, lot bigger than Boise State defensive front, so they should be able to get pushed on this football team. I agree with you, but you still got to give them credit. Five plays, 65 yards on the drive, and Andrew Pinnock caps it off. He had seven touchdowns last year, and Dan Weaver comes up, and that is no good. So the kicking problems continue for Carolina. Eric Kemery on the hold that time. So just like that, they get the ground game going with Andrew Pinnock. Carolina can't convert on the extra point. They still lead 13 to nothing over the Boise State Broncos. Here's a replay of the last touchdown. It's just eye formation and man on man. And look at this offensive oh, line. Oh, Mano, Mano, look at the blocks right here. You can see what Boise State defensive front tie. They're going backwards, and anytime as a defensive player, you want to get penetration. Again, look at the line. Just cave these guys in. When you got a 250-pound back like an Andrew Pinnock, you better believe inside the five time he's going to get the touchdown. Hey, Drew almost looks like they're merely annoying him there rather than trying to <laughs> tackle him. My little mosquito, you know, get off my side. Bill Petty with some great numbers, four for five so far in the game. The kicking game continues again for Carolina inside the eight this time, and that'll be Forsé. Makes a nice nifty move, gets out to the 30-yard line before he's caught from behind. As Brian Elam on the stop for Carolina. You can see why Brock Forsé was rated in the top ten, Todd, in all-purpose yards. This guy is very active, he's a very good football player, had 900 yards rushing, and a great kick returner, great punt returner. He just shows a little bit of his ability right there on that kickoff return. We thought Derek Watson was something that, you know, tops in the SEC with 166 yards all-purpose during the season. This guy had 186, 25% of his team's offense. All right, two tight ends this time for Dinwiddie. Try to get his team back on track. That was a 22-yard return. Bays on up front. They go split wrong. They got a little bit of lane. Pick up about four yards on the play. 
So, so far, Corey, with two minutes to go in the first quarter, I believe Lou Holtz has got to be happy with the performance of his football team so far, other than that kicking game, which he's going to have a fit with no matter what happens. Right. If, you know, any criticism I have about this football team last year, Todd, was in the special team department, especially the kicking game. I mean, you, you have two drives over 60 yards, and you can't miss the extra points. Those things later on in the year will just creep up and kill you. Offset backfield, and they bring Tanuki in motion. There's a penalty flag down on the play. On a second down and six, they're going to bring that one back. Motion by Boise State on the play. So Kenny Harney, the captain. Captain the second one, hey, move them on back. Five steps back. Mitch and Kenny up to about 260 now. That's Illegal real. formation, six men on the line. On the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Kenny Harney, one of the prototypes there for Charlie Strong, exactly what he wants as a defensive coordinator. They were unbelievable last year. Fourth in total defense in the SEC and 16th nationally. Charlie's a great football coach, and I would think this guy would have some opportunities, Todd, to get a head football coaching job being at the job he's done for Lou Holtz the past couple of years. I think he did this past year. We had to beg him to stay. <laughs> Second down now and about 12, maybe a little less than that. Shotgun for Dinwiddie, one of the first times. And he goes deep in the post pattern, and it's broken up. Ball fluttered a little bit on him, and if it had gotten there faster, it might not have been an incompletion. Sheldon Brown, the All-American from Louisville, along with Antoine Neesmith, on the breakup. Well, you got to be happy from a Antoine Neesmith. You can see here in the replay. Didn't wait to hear. Floats the ball up in the air. If he zips that thing in there, maybe a completion, but he floats it, enables the defenders to get there and get a hand on it. But I think that's some of the pressure he was feeling there in the pocket. I'll take my chances with those two in the backfield anytime. So third down now and 12 after the penalty. Then we're going to roll and look across the middle again. And oh, it's almost picked off. As he had an open receiver that time, but could not make the completion. And that was Billy Wingfield, the 5'10", 181-pound junior across the middle on the square end. Well, you can tell the offense is feeling the pressure now, Todd. He's starting to roll. Then Woody out the pocket to try to buy him some time to throw the football down the field. Had a man open right there, but the receiver just wasn't paying attention. Was not looking at all. Keith Shuttler will come in to punt now again. And Ryan Brewer will be back. Thought we might see Chavez Donnings, a really highly touted player, returning some punts, and that's almost blocked. And Brewer's likely going to say, get away from this, guys, as it took a short bounce, but that is number 22, Derek Watson. He blocked <laughs> one against Florida. And he was in on that one and had a shot at it. I mean, he's Superman. You almost can't take it away on that 52-yard punt that got the benefit of the role of Boise State. Well, Watson's a very good special team player. As we know, he's a kickoff returner. He can also return punts. But there, to be on the punt team, Todd, you very seldom see your, your best offensive players, your top rusher, get out there and try to block kicks. But this guy has great quickness, great moves, and it's hard for a punt team to block him. Now we're going to get a chance to look at a very exciting player. The Gamecock staff thinks much of him. Corey Jenkins is in at quarterback for Phil Petty. Product of Richland Northeast, right here in Columbia. Played professional baseball for five years, and he is an athlete. And look at him go here. He's going to run on first down, gets into the backfield, and all his strength won't help him there as it's going to be about a one yard loss on the play. Avalos on the tackle for Boise State. But Corey Jenkins, as we mentioned, very, very strong football player. He's a two-time All-American in junior college. And they suspect that he will get plenty of playing time this year, despite the fact that Phil Petty is a returning, very successful quarterback. They need to bring Corey along because Phil's had his injury problems. And he'll get no backs in the backfield this time and five receivers. He's going to run it. Finds a nice lane there. Fumbles the football, though. It's still on the ground, and Boise State will recover. Well, you're not going to get playing time doing that, Todd, and that's one thing you don't do. Regardless of how well you're doing the practice, you got to protect the football. And Corey Jenkins there running with the football, a great hit, 
but you got to hold on to the football, and I know Lou Holtz will not be very happy with that. Sky Dumont eventually will come up with it for Boise State, but we often see this. Dondrell Pickens, who got the chance last year to come in during the Alabama game, Corey, did the same thing, fumbled it. It's just so hard to get used to the speed of this of this level of football. Yeah, all this is just a quarterback draw. You can see there, great running right there by Corey Jenkins, but he doesn't hold on to the football. You know, and I tell my little kids, like Coach, you know, it's like me giving you a million dollars when I give you that football. I entrust you with it. You got to hold on with it. When that coach gives a football tie, you know you got to protect it. Quentin Michael caused that fumble, and now the Broncos with an excellent opportunity on the 20-yard line. Then when he will go back to work, but can't find anybody. Kenny Hardy going to run him down, along with John Stamper. And so many times we saw this last year when Charlie Strong's defense was put in a bad situation, they came back and responded, and that's not an easy thing to do. After defense, that's what you want to do. You got to respond after a bad play by the offense. You got to go there and make something happen. You see that the sack by Kenny Horney said, Holl at me. At the end of the first quarter, despite the mistakes by Carolina, they lead this one 13 to nothing. Beautiful night for football at williams Price Stadium. 21st ranked Gamecocks lead the Boise State Broncos who were in the first year in the WAC. I don't know why the WAC invited them in there. They beat them twice in the humanitarian bowls. But now they're inside the 25-yard line after the Carolina fumble. They go sprint draw again with four saves. Got to have it to pick it up yards. And look at DeAndre Island come up from the safety position and make the stop on that play. DeAndre Island is one of the most exciting football players on this defense. He's a smaller safety tie, but he's very active. He comes up, and man, he lays the wood on. You can see there he comes up hard from that safety position. DeAndre, of course, had two interceptions in the Outback Bowl last year. Made freshman All-American. Antoine Neesmith, and he will trade duties at the free safety position. DeAndre also ran track. 300 hurdles. I didn't know that was an event like that, but I, all I know really? is he can run. Really? He can run. Now, Denwood doesn't like what he's going to see. He's going to call timeout on what is clearly a crucial play for the Broncos, which is about a third and seven. So they'll try to regroup as they're inside the 20-yard line and trail the Gamecocks 13-0. And we're back at williams Price Stadium. But don't forget, tomorrow night on CSS, we bring you the re-air of the 15th-ranked UCLA Bruins in the number 25 Alabama Crimson Tide. Kickoff is 7.30 p.m. right here on CSS. Your source for the sports in the southeast. Denwitty now on a third and six. The 11 and a half yard line. They're going to run receiver screen to Fort Say on the outside. And look at that guy. He knew where to pick up that first down marker, and he wasn't even so much concerned, Corey, of the touchdown as that he's going to lean his body forward to get the first down. Well, I think what Dan Hawkins did, did right there, Todd, and by calling the timeout, he regrouped his guys. And you know, on third down and long, Charlie Strong blitz, you can see the blitz coming right here, sets up the wide receiver screen here to Forsay, and he gets his head down, creates the first down. A lot like Ryan Brewer, they can plug him in at any position, and he's going to excel. Hancock's got to keep an eye on him the entire time. It will go two tight ends this time inside the 10-yard line, about the six. With one back. Denwitty going to drop back again. Good footwork. Now he's being pursued. Flag down on the play, and the Gamecocks, I don't think, got him behind the line of scrimmage, but nevertheless, going to have some working out to do on this play. Well, when you get a flag in this percentage, it seems like it's going to be holding on Boise State. I don't know it right now, but that's usually the call. Well, no. Legal that's procedure. A little movement going on there before the ball was snapped. By Boise State. Did not see that. Illegal formation. Six men on the line on the offense. Five Second time. Minutes. First down. Second time that's been called against Boise State. So you get the feeling that maybe one of those tackles are Leaning back a little too much, not worried about Corey Edwards. Well, when you got a front four like the Gamecocks have, very active, especially Kalimba on the outside, you get a little jittery right there, especially if you're an offensive tackle because you know this guy can get around you real quick. Well, for the second time when they've gotten in the Gamecock territory, the Broncos sputtering a bit. This is not what they do often. He plays the right sprint draw, a force up the middle again, and this guy's impressive. 
Forsay, Brock Forsay, a junior, 5'11", 198. He didn't even have a scholarship. This guy was a walk-on. Finally worked his way in the lineup somewhere in 1999, and he picked up eight yards down to the three on that play. But all he does is get yards in bunches. Right here, this is a misdirection. You can see here the pull by the guard and the fullback. This is an OF play. That's off tackle, and you pull back Portland right there. Forsay gets a hole. He's quick, Ty. What I like about this guy, like as you mentioned, he's not very big, but he really hits the hole. When he sees it, he gets up in the hole. You got to like that out of a running back. Big set this time, and look at this. He moved the motion the fullback out. One back in the backfield. And they go option down the left side. He's trailed. Linwood, he will not get in there. Rod Thomas and Langston Moore doing what you got to do down on the goal line, penetration. Well, that's why I like Langston Moore, Todd. I said last year, this guy, he was back up to uh, Pinkney and Cecil Caldwell. He's very active. And this is what you like out of defensive lineman. He can run down the line of scrimmage. You can see here, look at Willie Offer taking on the block, stopping him from going on the outside. Langston Moore. Very active to the football, gets down and make the play up. This is what you got to have, Ty. From your nose guard, you got to run the line of scrimmage. He did a great job right there. So third down now, right at the two-yard line. Boise State in motion, sprint to the right side. Then when he going to pull it down again, and he's not going to get in. Langston Moore. Langston Moore again. Oh, my. I talked to Langston the other day in the weight room, and I said, bro, can you give me 10 seconds? He said, 10. I'm looking at about 16, and you got to like that out of a guy like that, Ty. He's looking to have a big year. Watch him right here. Takes on the block, and I watch him. He runs, runs down the line of scrimmage. Nobody's really blocking him, but the fact that he's hustling. People run into the football, and that's what I like about Charlie's defense. All his guys are very active. They go to the football regardless. No squad linebacker, they're getting their butt to the football. Well, fourth and goal now. They go for it with one of the best kickers in the country. The Broncos want six. Crowd is up, and either somebody uh -oh. moved or Langston doesn't like what somebody said. Well, either he saw the guy moving the football or he just got a little anxious right there, but I think that's going to be offside on the Gamecocks unless somebody from the Boise State offensive lineman moved. Let's get Dead the call. Offside on the defense, half the distance to the goal, fourth down. And Charlie Strong not liking that. Willie Sam's going to come into the ball game along with Rod Thomas. Look at Langston yeah. Moore, and I, you know, Ryan Dinwiddie is, as we mentioned, 27 and one. He knows how to use that cadence down there. Well, you go with that hard count, Todd, and when you get that hard count, you got to teach your defensive lineman not to listen to the quarterback because they start barking out those calls. And if you listen to them, they can drop, uh, draw you offside. And right there is the case for Langston Moore. And we go into a break. Fourth downs when you want one. Carolina leads 13 nothing. CSS is your source for sports in the southeast. Fourth down and goal. Dan Hawkins and his Broncos are going to go for it. I don't care where they are. They're used to winning on the road. High backfield. Isolation for say Flag down. That's down. It's a signal. But we do have a flag. Let's see here. Well, the officials are huddling up right there, trying to get together on what they're going to call. I think it's going to be on the game, Cox. Maybe all sides. Illegal participation oh. on the defense. The penalty will be declined. Touchdown. Yeah, there's down on the line of scrimmage and illegal participation. It's kind of get, uh, calls you get in the first game of the season before all the wrinkles are worked out. That was a seven-play drive. 19 yards and ends up in a Brock Force two-yard run over the top. Boise Strike State tries to make it 13-7. Kick is good. And they do so. So they take advantage of Carolina's mistakes by Corey Jenkins. They put together a nice drive beside some mistakes of their own. Well, I'll tell you, when you have a turnover like that, you know, Corey, a guy who done well in camp and the coaches are high on him. But he made a mistake from the football there. Boise State capitalized on that. Let's see if we take the replay. Look at the touchdown right here. Rock four saves. One yard line. I mean, you got to know he's going over the top. You don't need to duck in your head. You're trying to get over the defenders right here. And you can see here, 
thing I don't like about the Gamecocks front right here, Ty, is that they're too hot. I mean, when you're on the one-yard line, you got to dig your nose in the dirt, and you try to create penetration from underneath the lineman, get in there, and hopefully just take the legs away from the running back. Right there, Langston Moore and the guy up front were a little too high. Brock Forster gets the touchdown. You saw Willie Sams get his shoulders turned, and that's the last thing you want as a defensive lineman. You, you move down the line of scrimmage, you stay square. There's Dan Hawkins. He is no stranger to winning. Been at Oregon. He was at Willamette University, where he played in the 1997 National Championship for that division. And he's been a winner at Boise State. who's won 20 games over the last two years. Well, I wonder if we'll see Corey Jenkins or Phil Petty. Petty, this drive time, if I had him bet, or if I was a betting man, I should say, I think we'll see Phil Petty this series. Well, that Nick Calakai will kick it off for Boise State, and we'll get our first look at the return game, and that's Derek Watson for Carolina. He gets up to the 24-yard line. Did you see him the other day, Corey? He is really, he's lost some weight. He's leaned up. Uh, he's very athletic. He looks like he's in great shape. We know he's had the hamstring problems. That he's able to pick up 14 yards that time. So far, he's got two carries for 19 yards in this ball game, which has no effects from the hamstring injury. Well, I think they're trying to protect him right here. It's early in the year. You got a long season ahead of you, a tough schedule ahead of you. You want to keep a Derek Watson healthy because you know down the stretch, Todd, you're going to need this guy to be healthy, getting 100, 120 yards a game. Well, my color man is correct. Phil Petty back into the ball game, and he'll hand off to 22. He makes the first guy not just miss, but look bad. West Nurse that finally brings down Derek. Derek's a unique guy. I mean, you know, a lot of people always ask me when I'm out in the public, you know, what, what's wrong with Derek? What type of person is he? But the guy really is a good guy. You know, he just, he's got him mature. He's got to grow up. And once you get that thing together, Todd, he's going to be a really good football player. And he can do some things as far as at the next level. Well, he got 1,000 yards, 1,066 last year, first time since Deuce Staley did it for the Gamecocks in 96. And he'll get another shot here, a nice cutback across the green. And he crosses the 40-yard line, and it's obviously a first down. Well, eight yards on the pickup for Derek Watson. Eight yards right there. It's not pretty, but it's great blocking by your front guys. I mean, your offensive line, let's take a look here. You can see here, again, mano e mano, look at that. Now look, boom, you see the, the footwork right there. Makes the guy miss. The guy's in position to make the tackle right there, but Derek Watson's vision right there allows him to make the tackle and miss. Gets a gain of eight yards. Four rushes now for 37 yards for the Williamson, South Carolina native. Phil Petty going to go in the shotgun and going to let one go. Michael Ages is there. He lays out. He cannot get it for Carolina. You know, Corey, I don't even care if you can put those. you got to do that twice a game, I believe, as an offensive coordinator. You really do. you got to keep the defenders on the heels right there. If you never throw the ball deep, they're not worried about you. But the thing, you know, we talked about last year, Ty, that we feel that he had to work on the deep ball. And you can see here, he's getting better. He had one he should have completed for the touchdown to Scott earlier, but now here to Michael Ages. Just a hair too long, but like you said, you're glad to see that. Well, second and ten now. Derek Watson still in the backfield. We have three receivers right, and you can see they're calling to the play down the line as Phil Penny changed it. And Derek makes one move out of the backfield to pick up a couple of yards. But that's a good couple of yards. I mean, a lot of running backs can't do that, Todd. I mean, again, your defender in the backfield, if he makes a tackle, you get a loss of yards. But with Derek, great footwork, he makes a miss and gets four yards. I mean, great play by Derek Watson. Greg Sasser on the stop for the Broncos, a 5'9", 206-pound senior from Salem, Oregon. Same formation this time, but it'll be a third and five. Let's see what the Gamecocks come up with. Showing a little pressure, but they back off three-man front for the Broncos. Laurel Johnson snaps it in the shotgun. Rules looking over the middle delay to Derek Watson. He's got all kinds of room now. He's got a block. Cuts to the outside, and they know they're going to use a big angle to run him out. Well, when you go that spread offense, Derek we uh, Watson is your fifth weapon. He's your fifth receiver. He's a great receiver out the backfield. That's why this guy is so tough. He runs the ball well, as you can see here. Starts with the offensive line. Now look at the blocking. Phil Petty has all the time in the world right there. Now Derek Watson just sneaks out the backfield. You have no underneath coverage. He gets a gain of 22 yards. 22 yards on the pickup, and it's inside the 35-yard line. And I'll say again, they have looked very crisp on offense. Good play selection. 
And they'll go toss sweet now to Ryan Brewer. Mr. Ohio football does not find much room at all. As he picks up maybe two yards on the play before a host of Broncos make the stop for him. Given watching the break, you put Brewer in, another switch up. You know, but to me, Ryan is not an outside run. I don't think when you want to run an outside, you got to get some guy with some speed right there. To me, Brewer fits that mold of a Watson. He's got good feet, tie, good quickness, run him up the middle because he is a tough guy. He is tough. He proved he could do most anything last year in the Outback Bowl. Lou Holt said if Ryan Brewer was racing a pregnant woman, woman he'd finish third. <laughs> There's Andrew Pennick down to the ball game, and they go with the split draw again. Just a couple of yards for the Connecticut big man. Freight train, three yards on the game for Andrew Pennick. I mean, look at Pennick. Look at that dude, man. I mean, big thighs, big rump. I mean, he's just big. Has he ever even tucked in his shirt? I'm not sure he's capable of tucking his shirt in. I think he tucked it in, but, you know, all that stuff going on in the thighs and the lower bottom, you know, just kind of get adjusted there. You know what I mean? Whatever it takes. They're going to go five receivers this time. Laurel Johnson has Phil Petty. In the shotgun, Petty sits in there. Very little drop, and he will have the ball tipped down. We've got a flag on the play. Well, that obviously was a, a, a play designed to to go to somebody there on a slant pattern. You can tell by the offensive line because they were cutting the defensive lineman up front. So, which means, which tells me they were trying to throw a slant pattern there. But flag on the play anyway. Let's see what the official calls. That's an illegal receiver downfield for Carolina. Well, Lou wants to know uh, who was it. So do I. I would like to know that too, Lou. I'm with you. Well, he'll get an explanation. He usually does. See his lips right there, so I want to know what number. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. So some decision-making time. If you've been wanting to test your field goal kicker, this would be it, but they're not going to do that. Well, if I was coaching the game cops right now, with my field goal kicker, I would go for it. You know, the 28 yard line, I mean, that's going to be what, 45 yard field goal, so? Yeah, you're right. This is not exactly a 30 point game at this point. They need the score. Ryan Brewer's actually uncovered in the slot there. Bill Petty got some time. He's going post pattern, and it's good coverage on the play that time for. The Broncos has Julius Brown, the 5'10", 184-pound sophomore. Brian Scott ran the backside post, and Brown denied him. Well, you got to complete that, right? I mean, give the defender his credit, but look here. You got Brian Scott, a big 6'3 guy. I mean, great pass, but that's just great coverage. I mean, a great throw, great pattern by Scott. The defender makes a great play. There's nothing you can do about that. But I think still the great call. They had it set up well. It's just Brown used his closing speed. And you're right. That's all that's about is, is the lack of confidence in your kicker. I mean, when you don't have a consistent kicker, you don't take a 45-yard field goal chance. Go to the outside on the out route, and then he has got a completion. I've been impressed with the young man. He certainly has not been intimidated at williams Bryce Stadium. He's slid out of the pocket when he's needed to. Jay Swilly was on the end of that Dinwiddie pass. Looks to be right at the yard marker. In fact, they're going to check it. Well, the thing about Boise State, they had all their receivers back, all their starters, and even the second stringers, Todd. These guys were productive, and, you know, you, you would think Charlie May would be a little more aggressive when you got a, a new quarterback, a young guy. Maybe you'd think he'd put a little more pressure, maybe try to rally. We have not seen the variety of attacks that we have seen from Charlie Strong and Chris Kosh and John Gutekinds in the past. With regards to pressure, there. I will give you that. You're right. It'll be about three inches to pick up the first down for the Broncos, who have certainly held their own. But listen, remember, this is a team that was down 24 0 to Arkansas a year ago, came back and tied it 31 all, and then had a chance to tie it again on the one yard line and put it into overtime and couldn't do so. So they. Played some SEC opponents before and fared very well. Second down and inches. There you go, slide pattern to the outside, and that's David Michael. And they're starting to make some penetration in that Gamecock defensive line. Well, Michael's back up, running back behind Brock Foster, per se, I'm sorry. And this guy, you know, he ran the ball well, too, last year. He's a switch-up hitter. He's a quick guy. 
you know, runs by the 4 4 5 40, you can see here. The block in the front by Borland State, and Rashad Faison comes off the corner on the blitz. Tried to get a shoestring tackle, but misses him. Great call, great first down. Six yard gain, more than enough to pick up the first down. And they go with the end around again on the reverse. And that's Wingfield, but a flag is down on the play. So Steve Spurrier introduced that play, at least to me, four or five years ago. Everybody in the country's running that. Well, it's a tough play. It I is mean, a tough play. A receiver coming in motion like that, and if the time is right, you know, and you get that, that outside linebacker and or end pin on the corner, you can get some positive yardage. But got a shift here by Boise State. Back him up just a little bit. But I was talking to Charlie Strong at church on Sunday. Let's get the call right here. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Going back to talking to Charlie at church time. He, you know, looking at Tate and Cam, he knew that this team couldn't move the football. I mean, again, 44 points a game with seven returning starters. You got to know that this team can't move the football. You just got to limit them to scoring points. Yeah, cheek, puff. Ryan Elmas, all those offensive linemen back from a year ago. They'll go sprint draw to Brock Forsay. gets on the outside, and that runs Rod Thomas. Forsay, of course, Rod Thomas trying to make the stop there is the guy who's replaced Shannon Wadley, at least in part. Andre Goodman coming up to make the stop for the Gamecocks, but Rod Thomas and have the explosiveness to catch up with a very versatile back. I tell you what, I'd take number 36 of the Broncos on our team just about any time. Any day. This is a great running back, Todd. He's got, he has great vision, fast, and he's tough. And you got to like that. He protects the football, been taking some shots, but has not yet up to this point fumbled the football. Second and seven. They go back to the running game. And look at Thomas come through that time. He won't get enough, but enough to slow Forsay down to Dennis Quinn and Rashad Faison on the stop. He hadn't called... Quinn's name very much today. 6'4", 265-pound redshirt junior from Washington, Georgia. Started 11 of 12 games last year and had 38 total tackles. What I remember most about Dennis is that Georgia game where he had two picks. Yeah, two interceptions by the defensive line. Good really gracious. I tell you, I told Sheldon Brown, I mean, Dennis Quinn's going to have more interceptions than you. That's not good. <laughs> All right, a big third down now right at midfield for the Broncos. Zigzag motion. Two receivers both sides are on the drag underneath. They've got a man. And that's complete to Swilly. And I believe that's his third reception of the evening. Good job this time of using the angles to open them up because they had another receiver come inside for him, which left a little gap. Just a little, little delay, slant right there, right there to the receiver. You can see here Dan Weddy standing in the pot. Ooh, ooh, he fires that thing in there, Todd. That's a strike in there to the receiver. First down. I'll tell you, this guy has, has pretty good composure. It's been impressive. The knock on him out of high school, the only one, was he's six foot, maybe a little small. Play action this time. Dinwoody getting in from the backside. Is it going to be picked? Let's see the call. Uh, Somebody uh, make a decision. Get to him. Interception. Carolina with the interception. Andre Goodman. Andre Goodman came over, but Kalimba Edwards is the guy that hit Dinwiddie just as he was slowing the football, which of course caused it to be well under throw. Well, Goodman was the recipient of that interception, but this is all about Kalimba Edwards. You see here the zone dog. We talked about the pressure. Kalimba Edwards coming up the middle, takes on the block, hits the quarterback, Dinwiddie as he throws it, makes him throw the ball short. Let's see here. It's probably did he... No, he did not catch that ball, but folks, this is college football. We don't have the replay system so time. Forget about it. Gamecocks football. We'll take the ball and move with it. 439 to go as we change possession. 13 to 7. Gamecocks taking advantage as Andre Goodman gets the interception after the Kalimba Edwards pressure. But well, Derek me, will not get much there. Let me go back to Kalimba. I mean, when you slated to be a top five pick tie, you gotta make plays like this. And you know, scouts are all over the country now watching. They're probably here at this game as we speak. And Columbus is a guy who's got to play well. You know, you can't look at where they rank in the preseason about how you finish. And if he starts out playing this way during the course of the year, he will be a top five pick. Corey Alexander coming across the formation. 
Will Petty going to go backside now, and it'll be wide receiver screen. Got some blockers out there. But the Broncos doing a good job of running down Brian Scott on the play. Brian Scott, back on the play by Scott. Come on. That was Dumont for the second time has made a play down the field that really is not his responsibility. Dan eight right there, and that wide receiver screen has been very productive so far tonight for the Gamecocks. I mean, Boise State's having a tough time defending it. Crucial third down now. Petty flips Derek Watson over to the other side. Broncos showing pressure up the middle. Bill Petty will run it. And that's the little wrinkle they put in this year. It's going to be very close on this play, but they run that little delay handoff to their tailback so often that well, a very capable quarterback can make some gains on the opposite side. It just developed a little slow that time. It was short there, but I think that's a play that you run with Corey Jenkins, and you know how Lou is, Todd. You know, you give the guy a chance to get in there, and you don't protect the football. Now in this situation, you can't use a guy like Corey J Jenkins, who you probably would have used if he would have not fun with that football early in the ball game. Bill Petty, though, is capable of making those successful runs. I mean, he runs a 4-6. He's just had those bad ankles. He's more of a north-south runner. As Tyler Dean comes on for the first time this evening. And Tim Gilligan is back to receive the punt. He gets a little sideline there, and he's got some big time. Uh -oh, he may be gone. Oh, he tries to stop him, and Ryan Brewer finally knocks him out of bounds on the 16-yard line. Wow, that's the same time. Gilligan, wide receiver, 5'8", 164-pound sophomore. That's the thing you don't want to do. We don't want to give a team who's come across the country to play in your stadium. Do not give them momentum. And the special team right here, you got to break down. First of all, your gunner gets knocked down. Now look at this. You're just running by the ball carrier. That's Up the field, and your kicker gets knocked down. Great leap right there. And who else but to save the tackle is Ryan Brook, hustling to the football. But the thing you can't do, Todd, you can't give up those kind of plays on special teams. I mean, you got to be sound in your special team department. And the Gamecock, that's probably their weakest link. Well, until we get this cleared up, I believe it was a block in the back. The punt was for 42 yards, the return of 53. But thankfully, thankfully for the Gamecocks, they're going to bring it way back to the 35-yard line. So Gilligan's return will be nullified by the penalty. Well, Dan Hawkins cannot be happy about that, Todd. You get a big play like that on the punt return, and you get a penalty and brings it all the way back. So Dinwiddie will have to do it the old-fashioned way. He hands it off to Wingfield on the move to the outside, and... Sheldon Brown says, no, you're not going to get around me. Nice tackle that time by the Gamecocks. Attendance today, 83,019. That's the largest home opening crowd in USC history. Previous was 82,605 versus East Carolina in 99. Sixth largest home crowd in history. Four yards, second and six now for the Broncos. Been kind of... Status quo here. Crowd settled down a little bit in the second quarter with 1.42 to go. Not a lot of emotion really on either side. Gamecocks leading this ball game 13 to 7. Todd Ellis along with Corey Miller. You're watching CSS. Langston Moore. And did win his face, but not before Force takes the screen and picks up the first down. Well, Dan Hawkins and his Boise State football team is coming in here, Todd. With all kind of plays as well. I mean, a lot of screens, a lot of end of round. And this, you know, Force has been very, very impressive, Todd, tonight. He's done it on the ground, he's done that as a receiver. We mentioned this team had averaged 44 points per game. Twice it scored more than 60 in the Big West. And 18 straight times more than 18 points per game. Then when he rolls out left and he goes to the deep out route and it's complete. Good block on the inside on Langston Moore. And that's Fanuki. Lou Fanuki of Claremont, California, first team all conference in 2000. Had 10 catches that covered 30 yards or more. 13 yards on the pickup. Well, the thing with Ben Whitty, Ty, he is gaining more and more confidence as this football game goes on. And that's a tough throw. Rolling out to his left, he's right in the quarterback. And be able to complete that ball for a 13-yard game is very impressive. 
Sprint right this time, got plenty of time, three-man rush only. And then maybe that's why he doesn't have anybody downfield. It's almost picked off the shot face on. Hit him right in the stomach, and he don't miss any of those. And that's the thing that Lou Holtz talked about. I already talked directly to the team, not just about making plays, but make big plays like interceptions. He was disappointed the way they dropped so many against Florida a year ago in the ball game, which they had the Gators against the ropes. And that's exactly what he was talking about. That there was just a sprint rollout, Todd, and you can see Boise State got what they wanted. They got Dennis Quinn on the ground. He got cut, which allowed them with it to get on the outside. But he almost threw an interception there. Rashad Faison just dropped the football. Second and ten now for Dinwiddie. They're going screen backside as Forse again got some blockers out in front of him. But Willie Alford, the spur backer, came up on the play. The 6'2", 240-pound senior from Palatka, Florida, making the stop. That's actually one of his specialties. We saw him do that many times last year, Corey. He made a lot of plays defending the screen pass. And Willie Alford is a good player to have in this football game. Game Cox. Got a little pressure by Boise State. 25 seconds to go in the second quarter. Carolina leads 13 to 7. It's third down and seven. And with 25 seconds to go in the half, Dinwiddie going to try to come up with something to get his team into scoring position. Third down, though, he better pick that up first. Shotgun, no pressure. He steps up into the pocket, throws the square in, and what a catch. Jay Swilling again on the deep square end, a ball that was floated a little bit high. Coverage that time by Carolina was not enough to pick up the first down and well inside the territory. Look at the clock running, 18 seconds to go. Denwendy quickly up under center as we look at the deep comeback. Plenty of time to throw it. And there's Denwendy killing the clock with 16 seconds to go. We mentioned Calakai. They're Lou Groza Award nominee, two-time all-conference kicker, 29 of 33 field goals. He led the conference in scoring last season. So you know they feel very confident about bringing him up here as the ball's on the 13-yard line. But look at Check out the Will. catch here. Look at that. Leaps up in the air. Feels the pressure. Not a great throw, but the receiver was impressed with catching the football right there. Big-time catching the pressure right there. Motion by Wingfield, they're going to sprint left. Pressure by Carolina, and he had Wingfield, but he drops the football. And I tell you what, what he can throw. He's got an arm on him. He's coming up gimping right here, Todd. But the thing, again, I'm going to go back and say this. A guy like, you can see here again, half roll to the left, throws the football, perfect strike to the receiver, just does not hold on to the football. But this guy's been impressive. First time starting 83,000 plus fans. This guy's come here, kept his composure, and playing pretty well today. One timeout left for the Broncos as they plan their strategy with 12 seconds to go in the half. Third down and 10. Ball could be a first down just inside the three yard line. Two receivers left for Dinwood. He's going to sprint again. Rod Thomas with the pressure. He can't close him out. Then when he throws it away over the Carolina band, preparing for their halftime. <laughs> well, that's a smart play. You know, he, you get the pressure, guy misses the sack. You throw the football away. Don't force a throw. You don't get at least a field goal here. You got the best field goal, field goal kick in the West here. You're going to get pretty much a sure three points. Throw the football away. Don't force it. Don't get the interception. Yeah, you, it's always better to knock out a tuba player rather than throw a pick <laughs> down in the red zone. Malachi, as we mentioned, solid kicker. Blocked! And Rashad Faison uh -oh. has got it at the 30-yard line. Can anybody catch him? Malachi's in now. He cuts back across the field. He's got plenty of blockers inside the 20-yard line. Oh, my God. Just like that. Clock is gone. The half is over. Carolina has scored. Touchdown, Rashad Faison. We talked about this guy man for man, pound for pound. He's probably the best football player in the defense. I thought they would have a short three points again. Bad snap, bad hold. The kick is blocked. The shot fades on as we sick in of a big touchdown here right before halftime. We got to line up kick the field goal, though. Listen at the crowd going crazy. Man, that's a big play going into halftime. They're going to go for two. Look at Lou Holtz running down there. You think he's going to make a goal? Easy, Lou. You don't have any cleats on. Don't want him to blow out an ankle. <laughs> 
But clearly they're deciding to go for two as they should. The clock runs out, of course, but the rule is you, you have to kick the extra point. You get the opportunity to go for the conversion. That was a 30-yard field goal attempt returned 70 yards by Rashad Faison. Boy, oh boy, and I was actually wow. fairly impressed as we get a timeout now as we're going to think it over. Well, the crowd has been pretty quiet up to this point, and we get a blocked field goal. Rashad Faison gets a touchdown, and now 83,000-plus fans tied back in the ball game. You can see here again. Now watch the hole right here. It gets the hole fine, just a low kick. I think that was Andre Goodman. Goodman. Andre Goodman blocked the kick. You can see here, Faison, you better be glad you made this touchdown because you don't want the reputation of a field goal kicker running you down. No But he question. makes a great move, great play. Again, the defense, again, gets some movement. Georgia State's moving the ball on him, gets the field goal block. The shot stays on again, scores a touchdown. Great play by the defense. Calakai, not used to having that happen. He did 103 of 106 <laughs> extra points. So that was just a little bit more then. As we wait, the Gamecocks, if you're a big fan of SEC football, then CSS most likely has a night that will be a particular interest to you. This fall, each weeknight, is themed to a different SEC school. Check it out on CSS. Bill Petty now going for the two-point conversion. He's got trips to the right and Derek Watson. You think right flat here as they got the ball in the hash mark. Long count. Morell Johnson gives it to him out of the sack. Bill's going to run for it. Well, I, I don't necessarily agree with that call, but I guess you're going to spread formation after going to halftime here. Again, they get the touchdown, but miss out an extra point opportunity by Phil Petty. They're a great defensive play by Board of State defensive line. So not the cleanest half of the world, but the 21st ranked Gamecocks will take it as they lead the Boise State Broncos 19 to 7, and it's halftime. And welcome back to williams Bright Stadium. A score at halftime is 19-7 as Carolina's leading. Corey, an interesting half of football. I think you pointed it out. A little conservative for Carolina, especially defensively. Haven't seen a lot of blitzing looks. And offensively, I think on both sides, has been marked by some sloppy plays. Not uncommon for a first game of the season. Right. Well, you think, you know, Charlie being with a young quarterback, he would come out and be aggressive, but that wasn't the case. Maybe he's saving it for Georgia, a bigger game next week. But the offense has moved the ball down the field very well. The defense came up big when they need to. Well, let's go right to the highlights now. And we saw some action in the first half, and Phil Petty hooked up with Derek Watson right off the bat for a 16-yard touchdown play off of the screen. Just a great play there. You know, they set it up a couple of draws early in the game, and they go to the screen. Here you can see the bus right up the middle. When you get in the five yard, inside the five-yard line, you go to the big man. You can see here, Corey Jenkins gets an opportunity to get in the ball game. Great run, but boom, comes in here, gets the hit, doesn't see the defender, fumbles the football. Results in points for Boise State. I hope that doesn't wreck his confidence. As I you mentioned, not. it did. Brian Forsay comes back from two yards out and goes over the top, and they made a chance at it right before halftime. Langston Moore actually gets the block here, and 82 yards later, the little fire plug, Rashad Faison, gets a touchdown. Well, that was a great play again. Langston Moore gets his hands on the football as a result of a low kick. But Faison, you almost get caught here by the field goal kicker, but makes a great move. Todd scores a touchdown. Big play going into half because this game is a lot closer than the score indicates. But again, the Gamecock defense come in big when they need to come up. Yards rushing there, surprisingly. 66 yards for VSU. They've had some times. 90 yards rushing for Carolina. Derek Watson with, as usual, 78 yards all-purpose himself alone. Look at the time of possession, though, Corey. Time of possession in favor of Boise State. 16 minutes, almost 17 minutes to Carolina's 13 minutes. Again, Boise State's a great football team. It will be interesting to see how Carolina handles the second half. Well, those adjustments are coming up when we return on CSS. Gamecocks will receive the second half kickoff. I believe that's Derek Watson and Ryan Brewer. 
Yeah. Back to receive. Derek takes it about the 10-yard line. Got a couple blockers in ahead of him. It's bogged down a little bit, and he'll be stopped right at the 20-yard line. So one of the SEC's top kickoff returners last year is capable of breaking at any time. Stopped on that one. So the Gamecocks will go back to work. And you mentioned about Corey Jenkins. We didn't really have much of an opportunity to talk about it, but you're probably right knowing Lou, Corey Jenkins is not going to go back in the ball game right away. But I hope that they do play him again because he needs to get that confidence because if they're going to look to him, he better have some more experience, better have some more successes than what he had in the first half. Right. I'm fortunate that he fumbled the ball because the guy is truly a great football player. Eric Watson actually Bill Petty keeping that one. So how they ended the first half trying to go for two points. They fake it to Andrew Pinnock this time and Bill Petty comes left side for a gain of seven yards. Again, more little wrinkles out of the spread formation. Again, you fake the draw play because they've ran it six or seven times in the first half. You get Boise State thinking they're going to run it again again. Bill Petty pulls the balls out, run for a gain of about five or six yards. Two receivers into the boundary this time, and they'll go back to Andrew Pennick, who's got a seam up the middle. Andrew looks quicker to me this year, Corey. Well, he, he, he's worked hard, you know, speaking with Pat Moore, the Gamecock strength conditioning coach. You know, he's got these guys in pretty good shape, and Pennick, I think, lost a few pounds, maybe one or two, I wouldn't say, he was 10 or 12, but he is quicker. I think he's worked on his leg strength and his footwork. And he's just maturing, too. Yes. We always forget about yes. that, what a young back he is. Well, eight yards on that game, and Julius... Brown on the stop along with Travis Burn. That's Phil Petty with three receivers right. And he's going to throw the receiver screen to Ryan Brewer out to the right side. And Ryan's going to try to cut back and get nothing. Good pursuit that time. And of course, that's Michael Quentin Michael. We talked about, I didn't mention his name too much in the first half. Great closing defender, co defensive player in the Big West Conference last year. Quentin Michael is a guy. We just talked about Todd. He averaged 9.4 tackles per game in his career, and that's pretty impressive. He's a very active safety, always around the football. We haven't called his name a lot in the first half, but I, I bet we'll hear his name a lot more in the second half. Two receivers, both sides this time in the spread. Bill Petty going to run. Had a seam there, but Kevin Rivers could not quite get the block. As Gary Mitchell, linebacker, 6'1", 244-pound sophomore from Seattle, Washington. Nice job of reading it and coming up, but Kevin's going to regret they didn't get them because they had a big gaping hole to pick up some tremendous yards. Well, I think the key here for the Gamecocks is take their time, move the ball down the field, get some points on this first drive, and now you go up, you know, 25, 26 to 7, you get Bowling State thinking, hey, we're in for a tough night. Well, third down and five now. Phil Petty, oh, he stood in there, pump fake twice, trying to hang on when the protection was coming and waited for Ryan Brewer to sit down, and he did so just past the first down marker. Well, Phil Petty sat in the pocket. Boise State coming on the outside blitz right here. You can see the linebacker coming off the corner. But look, he sits in there. Great late protection right there. Completes the pass to Ryan Brewer for the first Gamecock first down. Eight yards on that pickup for Ryan Brewer. I believe just the second reception of the game for our Mr. Everything. Mr. Connecticut. Three receivers to the right. Derek Watson into the short side of the field, and Petty's going to run. They're going to set the screen up, and they've got it. But Julius Brown saw that play develop in the first half, and he wasn't fooled this time. Boise State is impressive, and I think what they're doing is surprising me is their quickness. Obviously, they're not very big, but they're getting around some of the plays that are trying to be set up by the Gamecocks. Well, when you're undersized, Todd, you got to use your speed and your quickness. That's your greatest assets, and that's what Boise State is doing. They're trying to trying to run around blocks. They can't take on blocks, but they're running around, making plays in the backfield. Now, they, I think you're going to see a lot more of that in the second half. Loss of three yards on the play. Second down for Phil Petty. He's got some time, and he goes to the outside, but again, Julius Browns knocks down the Post corner route by Brian Scott. And what was a pretty darn good throw by the Bowling Spring senior, Bill Petty. It was a great throw, but it was a great, even greater defensive play by Julius Brown. You can see here, great protection from the offensive line. You can see here, he's got great time, throws the football, puts it where it needs to be, good and low, but a great defensive play there by Brown. 
Brown had two picks on the year last year. And having an outstanding night tonight. So Petty trying to do what he can on third and 13. Under some pressure, dumps the ball off. He's got it to a good man, but it's going to be caught from behind, I believe, before the first down. It's going to be right at it. I think a favorable right left foot spot for Carolina. Corey Alexander, check that. Michael Ages on the catch. Michael Ages, again, a smaller type receiver for the Gamecocks. A guy with good, good speed. You can see here, Phil, feeling the pressure. Makes a great move. Good vision down the field. Hit, hits Corey Ages right here. I'm sorry, Michael Ages. For the Gamecock first down. Ernie Lawhorn right, so tells short. me it's 13 yards on the play as they'll measure this one. First okay. down, Carolina. Michael Ages going to be looked to by this coaching staff this year. The nagging injuries he had in 2000, but He's that scat back that you can put into a lot of option routes like that and uh, get some first downs. Art Turner into the game, one of the tight ends for Carolina. The exception of the three plays by Corey Jenkins, which resulted into a fumble. It's been Phil Petty all the way. Ball just outside the 40-yard line on first and 10. Pressure by Boise State. Derek Watson gets into the secondary. Derek Watson high steps the defender and gets out of bounds. So. His 5.7 yards per carry not in jeopardy at all. It's 18 yards on that pickup, and Mitchell again on the stop, the sophomore from Seattle, Washington, but not before Derek Watson picks up some big chunk of yards. Ty, the draw play is great for Derek Watson because why? He gets a chance. He gets to see the defense. He, he's got great vision, great moves, but look, this is what I like. Boom. He doesn't take a blow. He delivers a blow, Todd, and you got to like that off a running back. Derek starting to crank some numbers up. Seven rushes for 58 yards. 104 all-purpose. Pushing that figure again to be tops in the SEC, maybe. Four down linemen this time for Boise State. They bring pressure, and they go isolation back inside. And that's LeGarry Mitchell again. It's at least his third stop on this series alone. LeGarry Mitchell getting some penetration right there in the backfield. And and that's how you slow down a Derek Watson is by getting penetration. When the linemen are landing on you and you get push up front, Derek Watson can be very effective. But there you can see Brown get some penetration in the backfield, makes a stop. Bring up a second down and 11. The ball on the 23-yard line. 10-15 to go in the third quarter. This is Boise State and Carolina on CSS. Counterplay, good bootleg fake by Phil Petty. Plenty of time. Nobody open. Going to run it. Gets to the outside. And a nice job by Phil. We can't underestimate how important it is for a quarterback not to make a bad situation in that, uh, in that down and distance when you're in the red zone and you can run. Don't throw it into coverage. Pick up the four-yard gain before Michael makes the stop. Well, that's why Phil's a good quarterback, John. He doesn't get to beat. A lot of young quarterbacks and experienced quarterbacks will try to force that throw down the field when you get when you're having a great drive going. Phil is smart. He pulls down the football, runs, gets a positive gain of four yards right there. About the second time, the Gamecock coaching staff getting warned on the sideline to back it up. That, they do so. Up. And they'll bring up third and seven. Pressure by Boise State. Throw to the outside. It's Brian Scott. And my goodness, it's. Nice to see him finally get on track to get a Carolina first down. Just not really drops early on in this ball game, but he just couldn't hook up with Phil Petty. Well, he did drop the, the touchdown early in the ball game in the first quarter, but you can see here again great protection. Boise State coming on delayed blitz. A great strike there by Phil Petty. Brian Scott, six three, six four, big body guy, not that fast. Great hands. There you take advantage of your size and the smaller defensive back gets the first down. Now that was 10 yards. It's first and goal now with the jumbo set. High backfield. Watson dots the eye. Pennick, they go back to the dive play again. Man, he comes out of that three-point stance. Just rolling. But a nice stop that time by the Broncos. Well, when you get inside the red zone, you better make sure that you're ready for Pennick because he is the thunder, the boom of that offense when he gets in the red zone. You can see there, you got Pennick and Watson in the backfield, so you got a, a double dose out of thunder and light. Gives you a lot of options, and I've seen him work it in practice before. There's Derek's numbers. 8.2 yard average. He'll take that one. 
Art Turner and Rod Pratford in, tight end. Spikes the lone receiver. Tall sweep to the left side, getting trailed, but they're not going to catch Derek Watson. Touchdown. Hello. Derek Watson. Derek Watson again. On the sweep for the touchdown. You can see the guy got great vision right there. Great blocking out in front of him. And just leave it to him. He'll put it in the end zone. You can see here they went to dive first. Now check this out. It's just a pitch play, but look at the blocker. Look at Pennant. Look at your lineman. Now look at the vision by Derek Watson. And when you give him that kind of room, Todd, he's going to get in the end zone. Nice block that time. Six yards, 15 plays on the drive. Six minutes and 52 seconds as Daniel Weaver lines it up. And it's always interesting for Carolina. And the extra point is good. So Derek Watson gets his second touchdown of the evening on a six-yard run. And Carolina leads 26-7. to seven. Get your daily dose of sports highlights. Watch ESPN News every day on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Here's another look at the tall sweep for Derek Watson. And you see the wrinkle here. You see that was an old guard poorly. It wasn't just a basic tall sweep to get the old guard out in front of Watson. Great block downfield again by Pennick. Watson's able to get the touchdown. You can see here he's in. Holler at him, brother. I'm doing my thing, baby. Cedric Williams leading him around the corner. The 600, 6'3", 295-pound junior from James Islands had the bad ankle, been injured. Check out this alignment. Still bunched up is Carolina. As we look at Boise State ready to return, that makes it difficult to come back and set your blocks up. But they'll have a shot at this one as they go right up the middle, does Forse, and he's up to the 35-yard line. And no matter what happens today against the Broncos, the Gamecocks have got to get their kicking game together because they've given up some big returns today. 23 yards on the return, Teddy Crawford on the stop. Well, you get a short kick, Todd, first of all. You start, you get in the, start the ball at the 35-yard line. You're starting your drive there, and you can't give up that kind of field position. I mean, a team got 65 yards to go for, for a touchdown. That's putting your defense in a box. We'll see how Ryan Dinwiddie adjusted at halftime, although he he had his act together in that second quarter. And he'll go back to his back for say again. Brock for say has really been good going right up the middle. They have not tried the corners much on the Gamecocks, and you might suspect that with a team that is at least touted to be a little bit quicker. Well, you know why they're not running the corner. Number 55. Number 55. Columbo Edwards, I don't think you're going to get too far running the toss sweep around that end. Forsay picked up four yards on that play, and Langston Moore was the Carolina defender who stopped him. Three receivers, and they come back with that cross motion, and they give it to Michael on the play. David Michael trying to get to the outside, and Andre Goodman comes up and takes that 15 pounds he gained in the offseason to make the tackle around the 40-yard line, and we've got some yellow flags. Well, I know what that is. That's just holding. I saw the receiver right there had a hold of uh, Rashad Faison's jersey. Had a big, big chunk of it in his hand. I'm way up here, and if I saw that, I know that official saw it on the sideline. There we go. That's the call. Yes, holding on Boise State. As you can see here, again, the end of the round, you can see the back coming here. Now, look at the receiver. Look at all the jersey, the red jersey he got on Rashad Faison, I tell you. That's prom dancing right there. That's not really holding. But holding hey, the, on the eye. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Well, the fish was right there, Todd. I mean, there's no way you're going to get away with that, that type of cheating. That's right. What you're saying is if you're going to do it, do it inside somewhere in the interior in there. Yeah, right? hide. So you're going to go inside somewhere in a bunch of people. You know, not out there on, when you're by yourself. Well, that brings up second and a ton for Boise State. Chase Willie come back in motion and he does waggle and we need to drop straight back a little bit of pressure and it looks like some holding again up front but Kenny Harney will come up to stop him and Rod Thomas can't get away from an offensive lineman you know there's got to be some holding three yards on the game well you know your offensive lineman not you but the offensive lineman do be cheating I said they do cheat Deani with potential to hold there. It's third and 13 to go. Let's see what Charlie Strong comes up with. Well, this situation, Todd, I think you're going to see 
some pressure. I think you'll see Rashad maybe come out the corner, some type of zone dog and or blitz. Let's see what they do right here, third and long. They get three receivers one side. Here comes Carolina with a little bit of pressure, and put, including Neesmith off the corner. But then when he nipped, he gets away and throws the strike to the outside. But hold on, folks. We got flags on both sidelines around the 30-yard line. Then when he continues to impress me. He stands in the pocket, doesn't he? He really does, and he, and he does what those good quarterbacks should do. He just he makes the initial move to get away from the first guy that's loose and then looks to throw. 15 yards on the play, but it will come back. Well, again, Charlie Strong in this defense, third and long, you blitz, and that's what he does. So you can see Antoine Neesmith comes up, takes a bad angle, misses the tackle. John Stamper misses the tackle. Then Woody steps up, completes the pass. But again, the men in stripes got the last word. On the offense, six men on the line, five-yard penalty from the previous spot. You see Charlie here, thinking about what he's going to call next, talking to the guys upstairs. Cush and all the other game. Charlie Strong, of course, was a longtime defensive line coach at Florida during their heydays. When he put a bunch of players, including Kevin Carter, into the NFL. Jim Cox are glad to have him. Also coached with Lee Holtz at Notre Dame. Shotgun, first time in the second half for the Broncos. Third down and a bunch. Goes underneath and it's almost picked off. Andre Goodman's had himself a game now. They have given up some big plays, but Goodman has not been one of them. Goodman is a very active player. Then you can see here, Florida State with shotgun. Kalimba Edwards comes up the middle on the blitz, pushes the pocket, but then what he stays in the pocket. Great play there by Andre Goodman. Dropped the ball, could have another interception. Or his first interception. How sweet it is as Shuttler comes on to point. You remember Andre Goodman last year against Georgia. The team that had injured him more than a year before picked off Quincy Carter and went 70 yards. Ooh, a bad punch by Shuttler. It's going to bounce, and Ryan can't get over to get it. Ryan Brewer on the play. So the Gamecocks will take over. It's 26 to 7 here in the second half. Carolina over Boise State. Carolina will start first and 10 right on the 30-yard line. Bill Petty under center one of the few times this afternoon, and now you see why. Corey Alexander going to take it on the sweep from the wide receiver slot position. Pick up seven yards on the play. Carolina been balanced so far, 140 yards rushing, 112 yards passing on the afternoon and evening. Travis Berger on the stop from the safety position. Well, I thought to win this game, Todd, that the Gamecocks had to be very consistent on offense. We knew that Boise State, with their offensive power, could move the football, and that could cause problems, but the offense has been pretty crisp, I'd say, thus far tonight. Second down and four. Now they fake the reverse, try to give it to Andrew Pinnock up the middle, but there's way too much penetration that time by Carolina. Jeff Barnes, a couple backups in at their positions along the offensive line. And Skip Holtz, change for him. Got down on the sideline this year. Started doing that late in the year. He calls the plays for Lou Holtz, and surprisingly, folks, he's very, not very often he's overruled by his father. Carolina now on third and about four. Phil Petty, plenty of time, dumps it again to Derek Watson. They used it in the first half for about a 20-yard gain, and it does what it needs to on this play. First down, Carolina. That's a tough play to stop, Todd, on third down when you're in spread formation. You know, you get Derek Watson isolated on the linebacker. And most of the time, he's going to win that battle, and all he does is sit there in protection, waits and waits, and then just sneaks out. And you dump the ball to him, and when it's four yards for a first down, not much. So... Great job there by Derek Watson and Phil Petty. As you well know, linebackers are in such a bind because they need to drop back under the deeper yes, routes. Yes. First and ten for Carolina. On a steady drive, but not much emotion to it. No big gains. Bill's going to run. He thought it was, I think that's a busted play. Well, either Derek went the wrong way or something went wrong there. I know that wasn't designed. Well, Could I think wrong. Phil Petty right, thought he was going to toss it. Skip Holtz looks it over. I mean, he's even confused. You see the prize? Like, what was that? Well, we're not worried. We'll line up and call the next one. Skip only about four yards onto the field. That's fairly conservative for him. 
Sometimes those guys can holler out the plays better than they can signal them in. There's your total yardage on the evening. Second down and eight. Just a three-man rush by Boise State. Goes to the outside, and it's caught on a dangerous play where Julius Brown was closing quickly, but not before Brian Scott could make his second catch of the afternoon. Five yards on the play. I like this Julius guy. He's very active, Ty. We've called his name a great deer here the second half. He's around the football. Very good corner. And he's good in run defense, too. He's come up and made some big plays there on the corner. Well, you never really think this when you're out there just running your offense, but they would go to the other side. Julius is a sophomore, a little more experienced. Two freshmen playing at the corner for the Broncos on the other side. Third down now and four. Sprint left for Phil Petty. Got no room now. He's going to run. Good little turn and Phil showing some speed. First down. Who said Phil couldn't run? I believe Corey Miller said. I'm sorry. My bad. 11 yards on the pickup for the Boiling Screen native. The Boiling Screen native. You can see here, you got a sprint roll out here to the left. Again, great protection up front. You can see here, he doesn't force the throw. He pulls the ball down, ducks his head, gets some positive yards. That's why this guy's a good quarterback again, Todd, because he doesn't make mistakes. Well, because of that, he received the Joe Morrison Award. Of course, the coach who passed away here that is now awarded to the top offensive player in the springtime. Two years now he's done that as Phil Petty gets a timeout and a little confusion in setting that play up. So Skip and Lou Holtz trying to get it on the sideline together. We'll take a break. It's Carolina leading 26 to 7. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. This Saturday, we've got a full day of college football on CSS. At noon Eastern, Division I AA powerhouse Georgia Southern hosts Delaware. Then at 3.30 p.m., it's Central Florida and Syracuse. Finally, at 7 o'clock, Troy State takes on Middle Tennessee State. That's right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. First and 10 for Carolina. The 41-yard line. Broncos showing some pressure, and they bring it. Again, after the timeout, a little... Mix up in the backfield between Phil Petty and Derek Watson, but still produces a gain because of Derek Watson's skill. But a little rusty right now, Corey. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, too, Boise State, Todd, is, again, they're undersized up front. They need to bring pressure. They got to do whatever they can to try to clog up those gaps. Stop, try to slow Watson down. I mean, because you got to get penetration in the backfield. This guy's going to hurt you. Phil Petty's numbers right here 13 of 18, 122 yards, and a TD. Pretty good numbers there for the Boiling Springs native. Betty going down the sideline. Got Atkinson, and it's knocked down. Julius Brown, who else? Julius Brown. I'm telling you, Todd, this guy is a great football player. He's all over the field, but that ball, that ball was a little on the throne there by Phil Payton. It was. James, James Atkinson had a step on Brown, but Phil could not get it up to the left shoulder on the outside and long enough. You see here, I think he just put a little bit too much air on this football. It hangs up too much. Gives Julius Brown time to recover. Gets his hand there. You know, I can see Action there trying to use his right shoulder to just get a little bit of separation. You can see here, takes his arm right there. Boom. But Julius Brown, great defender, gets his hand up, knocks the football down. Brown from Stockton, California, as are many of the Broncos. In nine of 11 games last year. Pressure again now. Phil Petty gets a block up the middle and goes on the slant route for a first down. And Brian Scott, Darlington, South Carolina, gets the pickup. He's Mr. South Carolina football for that reason. 13 yards on the game. Brian Scott with an acrobatic catch right here again. These, Phil Petty makes these throws best. These little slant and in route you can see here. Right there, the defender's right there, but Brian Scott gets up in the air, gets his hands up. You can see here, watch the block here by Watson. Boom! Stops the defender, balls up in the air. Brian Scott comes up with it for the Gamecock first down. Speed is important. But using your body to shield from that defender is also as well, and Brian Scott did it that time. Now, perfect pass on the swing right to Ryan Brewer on the outside, and there's the Brew man. Look at him driving for more yards. That's what makes him a favorite. He's a special guy, Todd. He does it all. Punt return, he plays receiver, running back. You know, if need be, I think the guy can play quarterback. Nine yards on the pickup for Mr. Ohio football. People don't realize that he was voted player of the decade in the state of Ohio 
for the 90s. I don't have to tell you folks, players that come out of that state. Three receivers this time. Derek Watson, no, but Phil Petty's going to fake it and run to the outside. Picked up a good block from Ryan Brewer again, but Michael from his safety position wasn't fooled completely at least and stopped Petty. Seven yards on the pickup. That was a great fake right there, Todd. He even fooled you. But uh, you thought Watson had the football. Great fake there by Phil Petty. Gets around the corner. Good block by Brewer. Picks up another Gamecock first down. If you or I were sit here to break down what we've seen different tonight from the Gamecocks than we did last year, other than Charlie Strong being slightly more conservative defensively, it would be those quarterback runs off of the draw plays that would be the difference. And that can be, I believe, Corey, a very valuable, valuable weapon. That's the end of the third quarter. Three now. Carolina leads it 26 to 7. It's the fourth quarter, start of it at Williams Price Stadium on the season opener. It's Carolina leads 26 to 7. If you want to keep up with what's going on on CSS each day, then the place for you to go is the CSS website at www.cssports.com. You'll find our weekly schedule there as well as other information about our network. CSS, it's your source for sports in the Southeast. You said it, brother. CSS is where you want to be. First and 10 now for Carolina, right at the 10-yard line. Toss sweep again. Good block by Pennick. Can Watson get to the sideline? He cannot. Travis Berger on the stop. That up nicely from his safety position. That was his great pursuit there by Boise State Broncos. You can see Pennick pick, picks up the defender, gets a good block. But the pursuit of the defense ran Watson down, and Watson's coming up gimping here. Hope he's okay. He's not grabbing the hamstring, and that's the main concern that he's had. Well, he's pulled it, but keep an eye on him on the sidelines. They work on him. That'll bring Pennick into the ball game. Age is split wide right. It was not the 25 second clock. With a timeout. No, what they call timeout looked like they didn't get lined up properly or didn't get the call in from the sideline. So. You can see that they were in a little bit of an uproar out there, so had to call the timeout. As you can see, Dan Hawkins want to talk it over with his football team as we go into the break here. 14, 19 to go in the fourth quarter. We're back in the fourth quarter as you get a look at Derek Watson on the sideline being that's Rod Walters in the tie to the right, the athletic returner, Dr. Rod Walters. Look like he Maybe cramping up, Todd. He's rubbing his calf there. Bill Betty sets the screen up after having to drop back about 15 yards before he could get it off, but it was enough to get it to Ryan Brewer with very little gain. Going to take us now to third and 10. There's the numbers we mentioned. That's just carries alone. 175 yards. Two TDs, 3.7 yard average. Well, Mr. Connecticut football, Ryan Brooke. That would be Ohio. I'm sorry. Well, you got so many, Mr. Connecticut, South Carolina, New York, Pageland, Greensboro, and I'm just... <laughs> Troy, My bad. Ohio, My David. bad. I mean, you got three running backs, Mr. Something. Bill Petty going to take a timeout now. 13-31 to go. The Gamecocks in the red zone trying to come up with something to get them in that Carolina six-point range. Second half time of possession. This ball game, USC, 14 minutes and 30 seconds. Just two minutes for the Broncos. It'll be third down now in 10. On the 10-yard line, they'll have three receivers to the left side. Phil Petty going to look, throw the fade route to the right side. Brian Scott there. He's out of bounds. Could not get the left foot down as they were battling Quentin Michael and Brian Scott. Well, that's a good call by the fisher. He didn't get his feet in right there. Phil Petty just led him a little bit too much there to the outside. You can see here, this just a, in the shotgun, just step and throw. You can see here, the ball floats, hangs a little bit too much to the outside. Again, great coverage there by the defender. You can see there they battling for the football for possession right there. Yeah, just a little bit to the outside, and 
Oh, my God, this is kind of scary right here. But let's check this out. Eric Kimry and Dan Weaver will make the attempt. And a good kick. And it's good. 28 yards on the field goal for Dan Weaver. And by far, the best his footballs look coming off of the hold of Eric Kimry. So the Gamecocks back on the scoreboard after being bogged down a little bit by the Boise State Broncos inside the 20-yard line. They lead this ball game in the fourth quarter, 29-7. to Well, I think if this game was close, Todd, Lou probably would have went for it again there. But, you know, when you're ahead, you got the game in control. You know, we pretty much got this thing wrapped up. Hey, let's take some time and practice our field goals. Let's get our snaps down. Let's get our holes down. And hopefully Weaver can kick it through the uprights of what he did right there for the three points. That was a 15-play drive. Come see the men's and women's soccer teams. Take the field at the third annual USC Soccer Fest, Sunday, September 16th, 12.30 to 4 at Stone Stadium. Featuring, their, featuring the Youth League Attendance Contest, where the league with the best attendance wins a free clinic at the USC men's soccer team. The mission is a dollar for Youth League players in uniform. 50 yards on the drive and 15 plays, as we mentioned. David, so the Gamecocks, not surprisingly, against a team that is used to winning 20 games in the last two seasons, has put some points on the board, but by no means dominated these Broncos. The ball ends up inside the end zone, but that's David Michael comes out again to pass the 30-yard line. And the Carolina kickers that time not necessarily being the great kicks of a, uh, a bad return as Jonathan Martin made the stop on the 32-yard return, but coverage not quite getting down the fast. Well, I, I think what you have to do, Todd, you got to go back to work on Monday, and you really work this area, your special teams, really hard, and that's the kickoff team, because when you get into play, in the SEC play, Todd, the Tennessees, the Alabamas, Mississippi State, you got to play good on special teams or else it's going to cost you a football game. So I think you'll see the Gamecocks work a lot hard on special teams next week. It's all sweet this time. And Willie Alford gets penetration out there and causes Michael, and he gets back up and makes the stop. Now, that will get him some kudos come tomorrow on the film session. Willie Alford could not quite make it. He made the penetration, but then came back on the play. And the 6'2", 205-pound redshirt freshman from Palatka, Florida, showing some hustle late in the game. Well, here's just an option play. We see this more and more now in, in college and in the NFL. But you can see here, Willie Alford misses the tackle right here. But look, look at the resiliency right here. He gets back up. Boom. Great hit right there. Could have caused a fumble, but I tell you, coaches love a guy who plays like that. Michael Grant just four yards on the play, and they run wide receiver screen this time, and Andre Goodman not quite getting up there fast enough, at least not fast enough to keep Rashad Faison from making the stop. Faison, we got to keep an eye on him. Four-yard gain because he had shoulder surgery in the offseason as well, had hand problems. Not the biggest guys we've mentioned before, but... He's a tough son of a gun. He'll be back in that lineup anytime he's nicked up. Third and three. I bet you again we'll see the defense be a little bit aggressive. I think you'll see Kalimba maybe walk up and blitz. There he comes right there, takes on the block. And they go option to the strong side, and Dinwiddie leaping forward may have got the first down of the play. Kenny Horney from his linebacker spot making the stop. And it is a first down. This is Todd Ellis along with Corey Miller. You're watching CSS coverage of Carolina versus Boise State. Ernie Lawhorn on stats today. Scott Powers spotting. Appreciate their efforts. Fourth quarter here. 11 minutes, 53 seconds to go. And Carolina leading 29 to 7. And that's Jay Swilly in motion. Plays on the blitz. He can't get it off. And... Pootsair, the 6'5", 234-pound senior from Eagle, Idaho, makes his second get catch of the ball game, and it's a pickup of four yards. Andre Goodman on the stop. Well, we've seen the Carolina defense or defenders tonight, Todd, miss several sacks. Had great position right there, you know, ready to make the tackle, but again, Faison comes out the corner, ducks his, ducks his head, misses the tackle right there, then Whitty completes the pass. Then Whitty again. Very evasive in the backfield. When you make the shot, Faison miss you. You've done something. Four-man front this time, and Glenn Edwards is in his three-point stance. He comes up the field, but it's going to be a sprint draw that is stopped. And stopped 
right at the line of scrimmage with Jason Capers making one of his first appearance on the evening. 6'4", 255 pound redshirt freshman from Hartsville, very storied high school program here in South Carolina. Corey, that's what they're looking for. They're having trouble finding those backup two interior defensive linemen to come in that ball game and spell Dennis Quinn and John right. Stamper. Well, this is a great opportunity, Todd, to give him a chance to go in and get some reps, play, you know, got his game under control because you're going to need him down, down the road against these Georgias and other teams. Four-man rush, but there's no pressure whatsoever. No pressure, but it's an awful throw, so I mean, <laughs> it worked out. It works for the Gamecocks, but that's got to concern you against what is often, uh, is, is certainly a very fine offensive line, but not of the caliber that the Gamecocks are going to be playing down the line. And the four-man rush alone has not gotten it done for them. Bays on there on the coverage. Well, I know, Charlie, you know, when we're getting these big games, the SEC games, that he will turn it up, Todd. You're going to see a lot more blitz, and you'll see a lot more phase on. Kalimba Edwards coming off the corner. Keith Shuttler, the punter, on to punt. He's got a long delivery, but he gets this one off, and Ryan Brewer's going to fair catch it at the 14-yard line. Well, I would think, Todd, that, you know, uh, being that this game is under control, maybe we'll see Corey Jenkins. You might see some players late in this ball game for Carolina get some action. It's a punt of 41 yards. We'll be right back. Your cap, your way, disc wear. When it comes to pure excitement, nothing in our world compares with college sports. The traditions, the school colors, the rivalries, the athletes, and the element that binds this together and drives the excitement. The best, most passionate sports fans. For you, college sports fans, we introduce a patent pending new sportswear line. It's called Discware Collection. Let's show you how you build a cap with Discware. Step one, start with the cap. Step two, pick a disc. This is the heart of Discware, richly colored, embossed logo medallions of your team's symbols. Each of these discs fit into the cap face in a snap. And step three, pick the strap you want to wear. And slipping the strap in is a breeze. The logo strap gives you the clean look like a fitted cap. And when you're ready for a new look, just change out the disc and strap. You choose it, you change it. That's Discware. This exclusive Discware offer gives you your team cap, three unique logo discs, and two logo embroidered straps. This Discware set is only $19.99 will include free with each order three disc links that allow you to connect your disc for display and storage. Mark it on your calendar. Discware will be a number one sports product for years to come. This exclusive Discware offer for either the University of Tennessee, University of Kentucky, or University of Louisville gives you your team cap three unique logo discs and two logo embroidered straps, a package that allows you to create six different cap looks for just $19.99. Carolina goes right to the line of scrimmage. They try to run the shuffle pass, and it's not going to be executed as Boise State played it well, shutting down Derek Watson in the backfield, and that's the good news, folks. He is back in the ball game, along with a couple of new receivers, Chavez Donnings. Rod Wilson as well. Again, this is a great opportunity to get players in the game, Todd. Get some experience, you know, in front of a big crowd. You know, I would think, you know, eventually you're going to see Watson and maybe Phil Petty come out the game. Maybe Corey Jenkins, you know, give Andrew Pennick some more reps in there. But uh, not this drive. Matthew Thomas, a freshman wide receiver, has made a big impact also in the ball game now. Petty, after a one-yard loss, going to hand it off. Derek Watson looks good, spins out of one tackle. Can't get away from the Boise State defender. Kind of gets him up around the shoulder pads, but Derek certainly didn't look like he was having any leg problems on that play. 9.45 to go after Mike Phillips, the defensive end, made the stop on Derek. A few seniors on the Boise State program. Well, you think talking about their defense, Todd, these guys lost a lot of starters last year, and 
And we knew coming into this football game they would struggle because they got a young, a lot of young football players on this team. So, you know, they're like they're learning, and this is a tough offense to go up against. Tony Altair, he played last year a great deal with the most tackles returning, just 30. Bill Petty now in third and seven. A little time now he's under pressure. Now he's flushed out. Now he's going to throw it. Got a man open. Paul Alexander oh. past the 50 yard line. Look at him go. run. He cuts back and give credit for Clinton Michael. Clinton Michael. Oh my goodness. Let him get behind him. But yet Corey Alexander is brought down after the nice catch. A 67-yard completion for Carolina and Corey Alexander. Look at the great patience by Phil Petty. You can see here in the shotgun. He gets some pressure. You can see here. Looks to his left. Nobody. Boom. He steps up. Knocks off a tackle. A second tackle. Look. He holds on. Goes the ball. Perfect pass. Uh, I can't. Uh, my monkey's on my back, but anyway, Kyle, a great play. 67-yard game right there. Beautiful by the game, Kyle. Corey Alexander coming up big, and that's what they're looking for from him. Bill Petty goes back to work, and he goes to Derek Watson, who slides on the inside on the ball play with a gain of about three yards. Again, look at here. Look at your protection up front for the most part. Looks to the left again. He doesn't see nobody. He starts to run, but look, he flags his receiver to go deep, close the ball out there to Corey Alexander, catches the ball, almost gets in the end zone, but good pursuit there by Boise State stops him from scoring. Uh, to Corey's credit, I believe he slowed down because Julius Brown had the angle on him, not because he was just getting caught. Boy, that good monkey on your back. It is kind of warm out there. Bill Petty with the play down the line. He's going to bring Dawes in motion in now and to hand it off to him, but there'll be none of that as Rod Wilson apparently in the slot position missed his block. It looked like a Vallis or Avalos. I can't pronounce his name, but he makes a stop. Great play there in the back. You see him skip talking to trying to explain what happened. Well, Petty is now 17 to 24 on the evening. 212 yards and one TD. As usual, a journeyman like effort from Phil Petty. And let's not forget, folks, Phil Petty has thrown for more than 3,700 yards in his career and eight TDs, getting up there with numbers. Sprint this time, sprint right. Got a man in the flat, and he gets it to him. Goss was on the sideline. And there's Matthews, young freshman receiver making an impact. Matthew Thomas, wide receiver, 6'1", 180, from Pearson, Georgia. What I saw in training camp ran some of the best routes around. Eight yards on the play, but it brings up a fourth down. And that'll be Dan Weaver again, who struck gold on a 28-yard field goal last time. This will be one yard more on the hold of Eric Kemry. And it's good. Perfect. Two in a row. So after struggling in the kicking game a little early on, Dan Weaver may be getting a rhythm. And Phil Petty got some very solid numbers on that drive. He just couldn't convert on a third down play, but a lot of players starting to play and get experience for Carolina. Well, you got to be happy for Phil, Todd. He's really shown some consistency in the game tonight, making some great plays on the run with some pressure in his face. He's been poised. He's made even some great runs with his legs. So I think in the game opening, he's done a great job as we see Cocky running around the end zone with the flag, saying, what's up, what's up? <laughs> yeah, you know, Cocky is the man. A little cutie game, Cox, right there. Oh, how sweet. But my man, your helmet's a little big there. I think you need a downsize. He's always ready for it. <laughs> Boise, only 178 yards offense, seven points. So the Gamecock defense, despite playing relatively conservative, has held down the Broncos, who have averaged more than 496 yards prior to this season. Well, hats off to Charlie. I mean, you know, he's, he's a very smart coordinator, Todd, and he really game plans very well, and I think he's done an outstanding job, even though, you know, we said he wasn't aggressive tonight, but, again, they've only given up seven points. That's not too shabby. Bottom line's the bottom line. You're absolutely right. Boise State being one of seven teams Carolina will face played in the bowl season last year. 
There's your scoring drive, seven plays, 75 yards. Took 405 off of the clock before Dan Weaver put it between the field goals. Joey Bowers is back on to, to the kickoff duties. And this one's higher and deeper. Seems to have relaxed out there, taken on the one yard line by Michael. And again, he finds a seam and gets up to the 28 yard line before Antoine Neesmith makes the stop. This is going to be one of the stats I think that Lou Holtz is not going to be happy with. When you look at the average starting line for the Boise State Broncos, it's going to be up around the 30 plus yard line, and that's not good, Todd. When you play these tough top 10, top 20 football teams, that won't get it done. Especially when you've got a Freddie Millens or a some other of these fantastic players, Jabbar Gaffney, who play in the SEC, yes. returning yes. those kickoffs. They're going to perch it. Four man front this time with 6.27 to go. And they go I formation. It'll be sprint draw action. Then when he trying to direct somebody, now he better get rid of it. He does so, and it's actually caught on the side oh. and a completion. I don't know about that one. That's Tim Gilligan, 5'8, 164 pound wide receiver who had the nice punt return before. Let's take a look at this. Okay, then when he floats it out there, now watch the feet. Watch the feet, does he? Oh, it's a great catch. He got a foot down, look like. I got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Even That's a great catch. Even those wide receivers are no tapping this evening. So it brings up a first down for Boise State. They run the end around. They got some blockers out there, but Willie Alford check that. Jonathan Martin turns it back in but not in time before another first down is picked up by the Broncos. Well, that end of the round, Todd, is not going to get it done right now. You're down 32 to 7, but you can see here again, about the fourth time they ran this play, and you can see there, Jonathan Martin gets blocked, but look at him. He comes right back, chases the ball. Broncos get a first down. Sheldon Brown on the stop of the 12-yard gain, along with Kevin House, who I see in the ball game. I tell you, both teams thought they ran this play several times tonight. And they see it again from Winfield. They fake it this time, and they go with Force up the middle. Flags down on the play. It's either going to be a legal motion or holding. Sheldon Brown again had to make the stop from his corner position. Ten yards on the play, but it'll be brought back. Five-yard penalty. First down. Just five yards to back it up, but a legal formation again. So, you know, the offensive staff for Boise State are going to be looking at that. They brought some coordinators in from Oregon on both sides of it. Chris Peterson's the offensive coordinator. Looking at Dan Hawkins there. Not too happy, I mean. <laughs> you just I can't have that happen. Yeah, but I thought, I think Todd, he probably thought he scored more than seven points tonight, too, in the ball game. And he dropping back, tried to throw the hitch route, and just got overthrown to Winfield. Bring up a second down and 15. I don't care what kind of offense you got. It's tough to come up with a play in this field position. There's your man, Louie Louie. Pacing the sidelines. And I forget how many miles to say he walks during the course of the game. I, I read that somewhere. That he, Lost maybe a couple miles from up and down the sideline. Well, last year, some game. university officials thought he was walking too much. They actually gave him a pair of rollerblades. <laughs> I don't think Lou will take advantage of that. Second down for Benwitty. He's throwing the seam route down there, and Jay Swilly is knocked down hard by DeAndre Island. But Swilly again giving up his body. Third down, Lou Holtz, 224 career victories, 30 years he's been in the business, won a national championship twice, check that, three times named National Coach of the Year, was named SEC Coach of the Year last year. Due in no small part to <laughs> the largest that. turnaround in SEC history. What was that he had in the official? A piece of something, maybe a piece of flag or something. Screenplay for Michael, the outside, got some blockers, a good block. And picks up a big chunk of yardage, about 11 yards, but it'll be well short of the first down. And that was Jermaine Lemon on the play, who was on the bottom. Lenny Williams as well, there you see. 
So not enough for the first down. Well, I think this point in the game, Dan Hawkins realized that, you know, there's no way we can win this football game, but let me take my young offense out here and just work some plays, Todd. It's kind of like a little scrimmage now. Let me get my guys acclimated. You know, got a pretty good crowd still, even though some people have left. But let's just work at it. Let's just work our game plan and see what happens. Let's hope the Gamecocks have the same attitude. Trips to the left and Ben Whitty couldn't get it put together, so he calls timeout. 4.30 to 4 to go in the fourth quarter, and Carolina's leading 32 to 7. For the kind of programming that you won't find anywhere else, you can come to the right place. CSS was launched by two cable providers, Comcast Corporation and Charter Communications, to bring you the exclusive sports programming. And CSS is available to you only through Comcast and Charter. For more information on our schedule, go to our website, www.cssports.com. CSS, it's your source for sports in the southeast. Look at that beautiful moon, baby. On a beautiful night. Beautiful Saturday night, Todd. And we start off this season, and, you know, had some time off. And, you know, man, I, I'm glad to see you, brother. I've been, you know, it's been a long time. I looking you, good, looking sharp. You don't have nothing to do with me in the off season. I don't want to hear it. You don't call it, brother, man. You show me no love. Oh. Show me no love. Well, we got an interesting year ahead of us. The Gamecocks, of course, travel to Georgia to play the Bulldogs. And Mark Rich under his first season as the head coach for the Bulldogs. That'll be next Saturday. Boise State will go and actually play Washington State at home on the blue turf. Well, that won't be an easy game by no means. No, no it will not at all. Fourth down. Then ready to go for it. Carolina still adjusting. Here comes Faison. Here comes the blitz. No pressure. Square in, and it's complete. Benucci still on his feet. Check that. That's Putzier. Putzier has got his third catch of the ball game. 25-yard pickup on the play. Well, this is when we've seen Carolina blitz on third and long. You can see Dinwiddie standing strong in the pocket, completes the pass on a little skinny post right there. Safety was late getting to the football, and as a result, completed pass for Dinwiddie and a Bronco first down. Definitely threatened at this point. They go wide receiver screen and a host of Gamecocks getting out there this time. Good pursuit by them. Lou Holtz by no means, at least at this point, pulling out some of these reserve players in order to stop the Boise State threat. Kevin House, who made the stop. And Poots here, the play before, in on that one, a four-yard pickup. But Poots here have been going, playing a little bit of tight end, Todd. I was reading in, the, in their program that they lost their, their all-conference tight end. They've had an all-conference tight end the last couple of years, and Poots here have been going from the receiver position and playing some tight end because they needed a threat there as well. Showing pressure again, and they come with it, but none as Dinwiddie goes to the outside and complete again on the play. <laughs> That's Tim Gilgan again. And I am continuing to be impressed by Dinwiddie. Despite the fact that pressure has come up the middle at times, he's able to get the playoff stand in there and get the six-yard gain on that one. Well, I think by the time Dinwiddie's career is over, we'll see this game, this guy's name all over the country because he's big, he's got a strong arm. You can see here, 17 to 30, 160 yards. No touchdown, one interception there, but Pretty impressive, Ty. His poise in the pocket, standing in there, taking some hits, delivering the football for a young guy in this type of atmosphere. I would say he, he played pretty well tonight. He came from Elk Grove High School in Sacramento, California. And all he does is wins. He said this week to the press that he pictured all summer long that his team would beat the Gamecocks. Well, he may be short of that, but he's threatening to score again. Just several inches here on third down. Need to go back to prophetic school. Isolation. Forte again. First down. Seen tonight as the Gamecock starters come back in there. Langston Moore, John Stamper, Kenny Harney, Rod Thomas, Dennis Quinn. There has been some vulnerable spots up the middle for the Gamecocks. Well, now it's about, you know, hey, we, we're not going to give up six points. Charlie's like, you know, I got to put my guys back in there. 
let us get some goal line work because we may see some of this down the road. So you put your starters back in there in this type of situation and see what they can do in first and goal. Two tights. Motion by the fullback, and they're going to go slide play to the outside. That is not nearly as effective as they've been going up the middle. Antoine Neesmith on the stop for Carolina. Neesmith, of course, missed five games last year because of his knee injury, which brought DeAndre Island into the mix. He's from Walterboro, South Carolina. Plays, of course, fullback and tailback. Timeout now here at Williams Bryce Stadium, Boise State. Going to look deep into the playbook to find out something to come up with here on a second down and five with less than three minutes to go. We sure would like to hear from you. We've always welcomed your questions and comments at CSS, and the best way to get your message to us is through email. Write to us at css at cable.comcast.com. Dot CSS. Check that again. CSS at cable.comcast.com. CSS, it's your source for sports in the Southeast. I think there's too many like CSS and cable, you know, just kind of gets you confused there. Well, it's no CoreyMiller.com, but it's uh, it's CMiller.com. CMiller.com. CMiller.com, holler to play anytime if you want to be a player. You know what I mean? Actually, no, I don't. No. <laughs> too much for you, I'm sorry. BSU out of timeouts. Out of timeouts and pretty much out of time. But let's see here what they drew up in the dirt on, on the side under the timeout. Crowd getting up for this one. They spread it out. Go backside. Touchdown. touchdown. Oh, man, what a pretty play. Great play there. He Very well executed. Kevin Lozma. Tight end, 6'4", 250, came back from across the formation on that play and was right dead in the middle and didn't win his eyes. So what set this play up, Todd? Here's the play action. You can see the crossing right now. Look, Kenny Harney. He steps up, and that's exactly where Kenny Harney's supposed to be, right underneath that tight end right there. But he, he got himself consumed with that crossing route. He stepped up, allowed the passing lane right there to the big tight end for the touchdown. Too much time again, too. Five-yard TD pass. That was 11-play drive, and they went 70 yards. And they're going for two. Wingfield in motion. And they go reverse. Got some corner. And it's stopped. Kenny Harney and Rob Thomas, along with Antoine Neesmith, get to the corner for Carolina in time to stop Wingfield. Well, Ken, I'm sorry, Todd, but Kenny Harney said, hey, you got the touchdown on me, but I'll tell you what, I'm not going to make two mistakes right here in a row. As we can see again, what a hundred times to end the round. You see great blocking, but look at the pursuit right here. Boom, Kenny Horney and a host of other, of other Gamecocks comes in and makes a stop. Kenny from Allendale, South Carolina. Fractured his fibula, as we mentioned, in the Mississippi State game. Missed four games. And in that offseason, shoulder surgery. Still had 45 total tackles, including eight tackles for a loss. Going to take another look here at the replay. You can see here. Of the touchdown, you can see the play action fake. Got plenty of time. But what you can't see here, folks, is when you do this, Ty, they run that crossing route, and that crossing route is designed to make your inside linebacker step up. And what happens is when you always see that crossing route, you know there's a guy coming behind you, and that's what happened right there. Kenny Harney got sucked up on the crossing route trying to hit the guy, and they snuck the ball in right behind him. The half roll by the quarterback where it looks like he's going to sprint out and then throws back across the middle is difficult to defend. And you're right, Corey. The routes they were running pulled the people out of that area. It's, it's always a, tough because you want to get up and get a good smack on, you know, that receiver running across the briar patch. Good hands team in for Carolina as Boise State would likely set up the onside kick. They bunch four on one side and five on the other, and a good kick by Boise State. But his ball falling on by... Gamecock players, as a little scuffle breaks out across the field. And you get your good dance team out there just for that. It actually bounced off the Carolina player and went down on the ground before they were able to hold on to it. But they will do so and take over at the Boise State 45-yard line. This doesn't surprise me at all. Dan Hawkins was part of that team, as we mentioned, that came back from 24-0. 
against Arkansas before losing that ball game. Three minutes and 44 seconds taken off the clock in that drive. Corey Jenkins tied back in the ball game, and we can see here he probably run with the football anytime in the shotgun formation. Let's take a look. He nope. will throw, but it'll be batted down and run after by Ryan Nelson, a defensive end for Boise State. Got his hands up, and then he wouldn't give it up. So Corey Jenkins, on his first attempt, throws an incompletion. But that's on the offensive line, right. Todd. He let, the, he let the defender get right in his face in the passing lane. Got his hands up, knocked the football time, football down. You got to give a guy time to throw the football. Trevin Smith in the backfield now, as well as Mikhail Goodman in at the receiver position. Corey Jenkins at the quarterback. Smith will get it right up the middle. Who can forget Trevin getting in late in the ball game last year and going 80 yards on his first play. That'll help your average. That was sweet. One for 80, 80 yard average. Chauncey Aiko on the stop of Smith. Now Dondrell Pinkins right, going to come into the game. Of course, Dondrell is right there with Corey Jenkins for fighting for playing time. He's from Camilla, Georgia, 236 pounds for cartilage last year. Got some time in Alabama. He can throw it, though, and he'll throw to Mikhail Goodman on the outside. There's a flag on the play, and somebody's holding on to somebody. <laughs> well, he can throw. He threw that a little bit too far right there, but, but I think Boise State going to get called for cheating. Passing the fence, like he grabbed the jersey of the receiver. Let's see what the bad boys and strike call here. Pass interference on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Quinn Michael, the safety, doing some holding. That time on the Carolina receiver. So Dondrell Pinkins getting some help from the opposition, but moving his team inside the 26-yard line of Boise State. They'll stay in the spread. Dude, checking off right here, so moves back to the left. Let's see what's going on. That back being Gonzi Gray, and now for Carolina. And he won't take it, but Dondrell Pinkins will. Tripped up a little at the sideline, at the line of scrimmage. Picks up four yards on the play. Dondrell Pinkins, as we mentioned, played last year in the Alabama game, but was unsuccessful as he put the ball down on the ground. Now Corey Jenkins back into the ball game. Well, Lou has said he would would never get caught again going down to an Alabama and or Mississippi State without an experienced backup quarterback, and that's why you're seeing these guys getting some reps. Now he's bringing in plays with quarterbacks. Look at Jenkins go, but he's shut down immediately. C.J. Fry in the center position and Shane Hall playing guard, but they couldn't get their heads across the Ryan Nelson. quick Greg Sasser who made the stop, and Nelson as well with Boise State. I believe that's one play they're going to work on, although it's effective at times today with Phil Petty. Right. They're not getting the yardage they want out of that. You take a Woody Dantzler at Clemson. You take uh, some of the guys that play in the spread offense. You need more from your quarterback than what the Gamecocks have gotten tonight. Donzie Gray still in there. Chavez Donning's on split to the wide side. And they run option to the short side of the field, and Jenkins cannot get anywhere. Well, you got a lot of backups in the game now, and you got some backup linemen in there and backup back. And Corey probably should have pitched that football right there, but I think he just wanted to run and make something happen, try to impress Coach Holson, you know, because you made the mistake, you made, made the fumble early in the ball game, and, you know, right there was a bad decision on Corey's part. When he was in junior college, he rushed for 810 yards and 10 TDs. For the Broncos. Seven seconds to go. Pretty impressive by Denwoody and, you know, came up against a tough Gamecock football team, Todd. And, you know, they're young, and I'm sure they have the opportunity to get some wins later on this season. Well, our final score at Williams Bryce Stadium for the season opener Carolina 32, Boise State 13. And it's pretty typical first game from all standpoints. Some outstanding play 
some sloppy play and bottom line is Carolina's 1-0 on the season as they try to follow up that 8-4 magical season last year. Well, anytime your first game, Ty, you know you're going to be a little rusty. But the bottom line, as you said, Gamecocks come away with a victory, 32-13. Our final score from williams Bryce Stadium, Carolina 32, Boise State 13. As we mentioned, Corey, pretty typical first game for these two programs as we look at our final statistics. Well, you look at the stats, Todd. I mean, it was, it was a pretty good football game. You can see BSU 13 first down, Carolina 20. Rushing yards, big difference, 172 yards to 91. And the passing yards, 220 to 162. You know, I think the Gamecocks did a great job of, of controlling the football, moving it down the field, get some scores, keeping Boise State off balance with the screens, the ending the rounds. Derek Watson had a great game running the football and as well catching the football. So you get what you want, Todd. You got a, I got a victory the first game. You know, the defense played well. And, and a big turning point was at the end of the first half because Boise State was in the football game until this point. You come in here, you get tempted in the field goal at the end of the half. Langston Moore gets the block. Rashad Faison picks it up. You can see a scoose down the field for 82 yard return for a touchdown. The longest return of blocked field goals in, in the history of the uni University of South Carolina. That, to me, Ty, was a turning point in the football game. You come in the second half, Carolina offense dominates. They, the time of possession was a, such a huge difference. Boise State had not a chance to get back into this football game. Carolina with 392 total yards, and Boise held to 250, and Phil Petty with an outstanding night of 18 for 25 and 1 TD. A big game next week, the Georgia Bulldogs, and it's always interesting down in Sanford Stadium. Your final thoughts on whether Carolina progressed as they wanted to tonight? Well, they progressed for one reason, Ty. They got the victory, but now they go on the road, and I think to get to the point where they want to be, that's be one of the top contenders in the nation. They got to go to places like Georgia, to Mississippi State and win football games. They're between the hedges, baby. What a challenge. And if they get this victory, I think the most important thing is to be 4-0, 3-1 in the first quarter of this season. Then they can be off and running. So if they get the win next week, I think they're off to a good season. It's always tough to get a victory down at Sanford Stadium, and it'll take a better effort than tonight to do so. The final from williams Bryce Stadium, Carolina 32, Boise State 13. This is... Todd Ellis, along with Corey Miller, has been watching CSS coverage of Carolina Boise versus Boise State. Don't forget, check us out 8 p.m. next Wednesday night as we'll have the Gamecocks and the Bulldogs. As we say from here, Gamecocks Stadium, big. We're out of it. Good night, everybody.